following is a special presentation of MTN, the Montana Television Network. Welcome to the 76th Montana East-West Shrine Game from MTN Sports. Hello and welcome to Naranchi Stadium in the heart of Uptown Butte. This gridiron has seen some of the most historical battles over the last eight decades, including one of college's college football's oldest rivalries. But tonight it is home to the 76 Montana East West Shrine game. I'm Ashley Washburn, one of your hosts for tonight's pregame show alongside Carter Culver. Carter, this is one of the most premier all-star games in the state. What are your expectations for tonight? Well, Ashley, my expectations are exactly that premier all-star play from all these players from around the field. You know, we have the best of the best that Montana has to offer. And I can't wait to see that the product that they deliver to all the fans here and all our viewers around the state. When it comes to the history of this game over the last 75 years, East holds the all-time record with a 41-34 to edge over the West. But as of late, it's been the West winning things, winning the last two Shrine games, and they're looking to make it number three tonight. And the last time the East-West Shrine game was played inside Naranchi Stadium was 2013, so 10 years ago. But again, tonight is bigger than football. Throughout the broadcast, you will hear testimonials. We'll meet patients all in an effort to raise money for the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane. They do such amazing work, and we want to make sure that they can continue to do so. So at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a website, a phone number, both direct links to donate. Again, they do such amazing work. So open your hearts, open your wallets. We just want to make sure that they can continue those life-changing efforts. Amen, Ashley. I couldn't agree more. But before that, let's get, we got the chance to catch up with one player who will be playing tonight. Kyle Hansen's MTN caught up with Florence Carlton's Jonathan Lumen. Let's see what he got to hear. The Florence Falcons only knew success over the last two years as they won back-to-back -back Class B titles. A big part of that success this past season was lineman Jonathan Lumen. He's only been playing football for two years, but after this most recent success, he's signed, sealed, and delivered at the next level as he'll suit up for the Montana State Bobcats this coming fall. Jonathan Lumen is one of many standouts across the state getting their final high school football opportunity this weekend in the 76th annual East-West Shrine Game. Uh, it just means a lot, honestly. I just think I'm very lucky and blessed just to be playing football out here and then just get like another chance to like be among the best guys. It's the final notch on a rapid and remarkable high school football journey. Lumen was homeschooled growing up, but he decided to attend Florence Carlton High School once he entered freshman year. And quickly, the football bug was planted. Sophomore year, I actually had a bunch of classes, a bunch of the football guys, and they're like, dude, you need to play football. So at the end of sophomore year, I started hitting the weight room with the football guys, and I just started junior year. The learning curve was drastic. His junior year as an offensive lineman. But Lumen learned and played mostly JV as the Falcons won the Class B football championship. It was fun. I, it was like a little intimidating and scary at first, uh, for sure. But then all the guys were super nice. Uh, like all the coaches were super inviting. They saw my size and like I was a great guy. I wanted to put in work and so this made it very inviting. Lumen utilized team camps in the summer between his junior and senior years to grow in the game. Once things clicked, he was off and running as he helped lead the Falcons to another state title. And he also drew the attention of MSU, who signed him as a preferred walk-on, which confirmed his growth in the sport in such a short amount of time. When I got the offer, I was just like, wow. I, I was just speechless, because like two years putting in work and then finally seeing it pay off and like getting an opportunity like this to go to MSU was just like unreal. So then the coaches are like, love them, like they're all great. And so deciding to go to MSU was great. I just committed and then I was like, yeah, this is a place I think I want to be. The future is bright for Lumen, who had an unorthodox path to this point but is now seeing his hard work reap the rewards. Uh, I think it's just because like I've only been playing for two years and I'm like I, there's so much more I, like I missed out on the other years and I think it's just a great opportunity to like build the relationships and get like discipline. I think it's just a great thing to do so I, I just think yeah I just want to put in work for the next four or five years and just see what comes out of it. Reporting in Butte, Kyle Hansen, MTN Sports. Such a great story from Kyle Hansen, but again, tonight is bigger than football, which is why I'm so excited to introduce our first guest, Peter Brewer, the hospital administrator for Shriners Children in Spokane. As the hospital administrator, from your point of view, how important is this Montana East-West Shrine game? Well, Ashley, yeah, this is an incredible event. You know, 76 years, and you're here talking about the best of the best, you know, kind of an all-star game. It really doesn't get much better than that. But again, for us, it's all about really two things awareness you know for what we do at Shriner Short in Spokane and the fundraising that goes on and each and every year it's an incredible event but it's great to be here in Butte. And I got to just say you know last year we raised over two hundred thousand dollars which I'm sure is a record we're going to try to do that again tonight but what can you say about the services that you guys provide for Montana families? 
Well, it's kind of not only done kind of at our hospital in Spokane, but it's also done in an outreach clinic in Calsbell, Montana. And so every year we do surgeries there as well. But it's all about kind of minor surgeries to sports medicine to scoliosis. Amazing stuff that goes on for the kids here in Montana. Now, we've just got a little bit of time left, but what's the most important thing you want people to know about the Shriners Hospital? Well, it's certainly a real honor to take care of the kids from Montana. But again, it's all about, it's, it's quick and easy. If you have an orthopedic issue, come see us. Give us a call. And again, we're raising money tonight, which you said you might do a little dance, hoping that people will raise some money. Can we get a little dance right now? A little dance here, folks. There we go, Peter. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you again so much for your time. We're going to keep raising money. We'll be back right after this break with the lineups for tonight's East-West Shrine game. Welcome back inside Naranchi Stadium, home of the East-West Shrine Game. Some of the best talent all on one field under the lights tonight. What do we say we get into these lineups? Let's do it, Ashley. Well, let's meet the players of the East team first, starting with the quarterback, CMR's Cole Taylor. He's headed to Montana State, but not as a quarterback, though. He's committed as an athlete, will probably play some linebacker. Then we've got Bozeman's Jake Casagranda. Ball security has long been a hallmark of his career. Only 11 interceptions in his varsity career. And then Lewistown's Gage Norsland knows a thing or two about winning. He's going to try to lead that East team to a win tonight, just like he led the Golden Eagles to their first ever state championship. Now, if we dive into those skilled players, a name you don't probably recognize, wide receiver Mateo Civitrez, one of two Canadians playing in tonight's Shrine game. And then Cody Struts, a late addition tonight. He got called up on Monday, which unfortunately means somebody went down, and that was Billing West. Jackson Tucker, who's committed to the Grizz, a big blow to the East offensive line, but still a lot of talent in that group, especially their two tackles. Great Falls, Brendan Lockhart, and then Bozeman's Everett Carr, two guys you want to look out for. Now, if we switch over to the other side of the ball into the secondary, a lot of wrestlers making up that cornerback room. You've got Avery Allen, four-time wrestling state champ, and then Sydney Xander Dean, three times. So seven championships just between the two of them. And then inside the box for East defense, you've got a pair of future Bobcats. Both played eight-man football. Melstone's Bryce Greeby reuniting with his brother Brody. And then Fairview's Hunter Charbonneau, a standout on that defensive line. A total of five Bobcats on that East roster, but on the West roster, you've got eight of them. How about we talk about that? Yeah, one of those Bobcats on the West roster is quarterback Patrick Duchesne from Florence Carlton, who led the Falcons to back-to-back -back Class B state champs. Fellow quarterback Jarrett Wilson is a triplet out of Polson who's going to be heading to Tech. When it comes to our skill position players, we got William Arsenault, the other Canadian player, a wide receiver, and fellow wide receiver Cameron Guernsey out of Butte, following in his dad's footsteps, joining the Grizz. Fellow teammate Austin Beeler from Capital is another player also following his dad's steps, heading over to UM. He's joined by fellow offensive lineman Jonathan Lumen from Florence Carlton, who we spoke about earlier. When it comes to the defensive side of things, Finn Ridgeway out of Whitefish is leading their secondary. First team all selection, QB and cornerback, and as a catcher in the inaugural high school baseball season. That secondary is rounded out by J.J. Dolan out of Sentinel, who comes from a huge line of Grizz football players, but he's changing the family tradition, heading to the Cats. When it comes to the defensive line, Talon Marsh, capital. I mean, with a name like that, how can you yep. not be great at football? Montana Gatorade Player of the Year should be an absolute wrecking ball for the West. Last but not least, we got Cy Stevenson out of Livy, listed as an offensive linebacker, true Swiss Army knife, all over the field. He's going to be a future Grizz that can do it all. That should just about do it for our West roster. How do you not get excited when you hear about all these names and where they're committed? I mean, you literally have some of the best talent in the state all on one field. And again, we talked about some of those roster changes with Cody Strutz, a big Sandy, subbing in for Jackson Tucker. Our Tom Wiley spoke with both of them earlier this week. Well, most players learned they were selected to the East-West Shrine game on Christmas morning. Now, a few others were called up in the weeks and months before camp begins. And then there's Big Sandy's Cody Struts, who didn't get a call until Monday. I went and lifted in the morning, came home, drank my protein shake, then went and sat on my butt and started playing some Xbox and had my phone sitting right next to me. And I pick it up, and it's one of the coaches. And then they said, uh, do you have your football stuff ready? I was like, uh, no, why? And they're like, you're coming to play in the Shrine game. And I've been working all summer just preparing for a moment like this to happen. So it finally showed itself. And 
I was very speechless about it. After getting packed and making the trip from Big Sandy, Struts reported to practice three hours after that phone call. My mind was just in shambles. I couldn't figure out. I was like, I got to tell my dad. I got to tell all these kids, you know, so I'm telling them while trying to pack and get down here. But it, I got ready in about an hour and was on my way down. Made it for a little bit of film, sat down with the coaches. They went over some plays with me and then went right into my first practice. So The roster spot opened up after Billings West guard Jackson Tucker dislocated his shoulder during practice on Monday. But Tucker didn't head home. He'll still be on the sidelines this week supporting his teammates. Keep my boys accountable, um, making sure they're fired up. You know, making sure they got that energy out there playing for me. You know? No, it's such an honor to be out here and be invited to play out here. Um, I just couldn't pass up the opportunity. You know, I'm still part of this team. Tucker is signed with the Grizz, so his playing days are far from over. But it marks a final football game for Struts, who missed winning a state championship with the Pioneers after breaking his collarbone in the semis. Wasn't really prepared to play another football game this week, and. Uh, Got the call and I was just so grateful for it. You know, these guys are great. They've been helping me out. The coaches and the players have been so patient with us six man players helping us out, getting us figured out. And, you know, I'm just so grateful for this opportunity. Tom Wiley. East on three, one, two, three. East. MTN Sports. It just shows you the type of guy that Jackson Tucker is. Still want to be here all week despite not being able to play in this game. He's going to be a big time player for the Grizz coming up. I'm excited to see what goes on for his career. No doubt about it, Ashley. And we got a lot more to be excited about. So we got an interview coming up with someone on the Shriners International Board of Directors and Richard Burke coming up after the break. Be sure to stick with us. Welcome back to Naranchi Stadium. We are just a couple minutes away from kickoff at this point, but we really kicked off the night last night with the banquet. It was held at the MAC, which is also known as the Maroon Activity Center. There were hundreds of people present from wall to wall. It was such an exciting time. Good feud, but I think the best part about it, we raised $33,000 to raise the night off of those live auction items. But again, that is just the beginning of it. Please make sure you keep continuing calling that phone number or visit that website. All donations are greatly appreciated. Thank you, and thank you, Ashley, and welcome back. I'm here with Richard Burke on the Shriners International Board of Directors. Richard, could you just tell us a little bit about uh, how the Montana East-West Shrine game helps with the mission of the hospital? Well, you know, this is the 76th uh, um, East-West Montana Shrine Bowl, and it's been going on for 75 years before this. But uh, the money raised here goes to help kids at our at our Spokane Hospital, and, uh, and there's... Uh, we, we, we treated about 15, 150,000 kids at the hospital this year. I'm sorry, it was 15,000. That's incredible. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's an incredible place where kids can get, uh, they, they can get treated for orthopedic conditions, uh, spinal cord injuries, cleft lip and palate, and uh, of course, sports-related injur injuries. And we also have a clinic nearby here that's in Kalispell. That is incredible work that you guys do. Could you tell me a little bit more about Shriners Children's Spokane? Shriners Trin Children's Spokane is a wonderful place. It's uh, got the leading orthopedic surgeons in in this area of the country, and uh, it's been there for uh, it's been there for nearly a hundred years. And it, it's a uh, it's just an incredible place. If uh, if you've got children that need need that type of, of service, uh, we recommend you go there first first time. I love that. I love that. Uh, as a member of the board of International Board of Directors, could you tell me a little bit about, like, what is it, would you say the most important things are to you in your position? Of course, children. Children. Taking care of children. That's what we're all about. Take, then our mission now is to, to treat children in more places. So we're trying to expand our mission. Uh, but, uh, but it's, uh, I mean, we, we treat all sorts of kids all over the world in, in about 170 locations around the world. That is, incre that is incredible, Richard. And what is your, say, is your favorite part of the job? My, the kids. Definitely the kids. So, you know, the kids, the traveling, uh, being together with the, with the nobles. 
temples and the Shriners from in every location we go to. I love hearing that. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Well, we've got a lot to get excited for tonight. Are you cheering for any specific team tonight? You can tell me. It's fine. No, no. The children, right? The children. Uh, the children are the winners. Absolutely. Well, there's a lot of exciting things. Carter and I will both be on the sidelines giving you upstate, but we, this is not our entire team tonight upstairs. We have both Tom Wiley and Greg Upham that will be joining us. The kickoff for the 76th annual Montana East West Shrine game is just in a couple minutes, so make sure you stick with us. Welcome to the 76th Montana East West Shrine game from MTN Sports. Welcome to beautiful and historic Naranchi Stadium in Butte, America. The site of the 76th Montana East-West Shrine Game, putting the best the East has to offer against the cream of the crop from west of the Continental Divide. Now, while football certainly the draw for fans tuning into tonight's game, you're going to hear a lot about the purpose of this game, which is raising money and awareness for the vital, vital work being done at the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane. Now, you've heard representatives from the Children's Hospital during the pregame show. We'll have much more during the broadcast, but for now, let's talk a little football. Tom Wiley joined by the great Greg Upham. You had a great line before we went live here. I'm going to say it. We are a mile high. Butte is a mile deep, but everything's on the level. Everybody's on the level when you're in Butte. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, you can feel the energy, can't you, Tom? This is absolutely exciting, and there is some horsepower on the field tonight. From the east, Coach, Coach Lear is bringing down the boys from the snowies, and they're not here to eat pasties, I'll tell you that. And on the west, Coach Mihalich has got a stable full of speed, and it'll be interesting to see how they try to stop each other tonight. Certainly going to be fun to watch. Now, uh, uh, Greg, you, you've been a part of this game is, is, is on the sidelines as a coach. You've been up here in the booth for a number of years. This is the premier all-star game during the summer schedule. What makes it that? You know, I'll tell you, it's it, Montana knows how to play football, right? I mean, we love Montana. We play it well. There's national championships all over the place. There's a lot of cats in the house tonight, and and we're just seeing uh, just greatness everywhere. And so when you when you bring Montanans together outside when it's almost <laughs> football season, great things are going to happen. Yeah, Naranchi Stadium, truly, truly amazing. You see the coin toss down right there going on right now. We'll learn who's going to receive the opening kickoff. You've had a chance to look at some of these rosters. You never know who is going to be uh, standing out in the Shrine game, but who do you think when you look at these rosters, we're definitely going to be saying their name tonight? Well, I think you have to talk about Duchesne from Florence Carlton. I mean, he's coming out of a small school, but the Cats picked him up, and he is dangerous. I was down on the field and watched him throw the ball and watched him move. And Wilson, the second quarterback from West, not that they're first and second on the West side, they are both dangerous. And, you know, interestingly enough, on the East, the secondary is loaded with wrestlers and state champions, and there's toughness everywhere all over the East team. All right, well, we got an all-star team up here behind the scenes and of course down the sideline where Ashley Washburn and Carter Culver are standing by. Ashley Carter, what are your thoughts before kickoff? Well, our first thoughts, it's getting a little windy down here. I mean, I'm hearing James Rafferty in my ear bit. saying we got a little flow in our hair. But, you know, you guys talked about just all the talent that is on this field tonight. We went through the East team, the West team in that pregame. But specifically, because you're going to be on the West team today, who is looking out? Who are you looking out for tonight? One guy I really got my eye on is Cy Stevenson out of Libby. He's just a do-it-all Swiss Army knife. And he's heading to the Grizz, and he racked up over 1,300 rushing yards and over 130 tackles in the same season his senior year. He is just an absolute monster of a man. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does on a bigger field matching up against some of the best Montana has to offer so definitely a guy to keep an eye on how about and you somebody Ashley? I want to say is MC3 is what they call him Mateo Sivares Sivitures he's from Canada he's one of the two Canadian players today and I kind of talked to him earlier this week and he says he feels like he has a lot to prove coming down to a mayor his goal is to eventually play here in the states and he knows that this is just the start tonight being on U.S. soil he's ready to put up some numbers tonight but we'll send it back up to you guys up in the booth Hey, th thanks, Ashley and Carter. You, you saw a look there at the uh, patient ambassador. That is Gavin Devers. He's a wonderful, wonderful human. Uh, we are 15 seconds away for kickoff here, and let's take a look. Who's uh, won that coin toss? I didn't see it. We were turning around as the wind started blowing up here in the booth. We are on top of the press box, Greg. We're, we are. We, I think we're higher than a mile high today. <laughs> <laughs> you almost blew away, Tom. We're almost up there. I had a bunch of papers go fly it. We had some folks coming to grab it. All right, and we have the all clear for kickoff. Looks like the East team kicking off for the West. And there's a little gamesmanship on the rosters. 
you know, they didn't list any specialists on these rosters. They have the kicker, number 49, Eli Grishel, listed as a safety. But I can tell you, he's never played safety in his life. He is a kicker through and through, going to Rocky Mountain College. Actually a really incredible golfer as well. So he's teeing it up on yeah, the first got, tee. And the West has Norris and Carter in the backfield. And let me tell you what, if Carter catches a ball, he may be gone. He may run all the way to Missoula before anybody sees him. Yes. This guy's got legit speed. Absolutely. Tom Carter from Helena Capital, the undefeated state champions in the AA. Average 9.6 yards per carry on the ground. He had a couple of kickoff returns for touchdowns as well. So here we are. We are underway and they scored it in the opening moments. How about that gamesmanship? How about that? Was that a squib or was that an onside kick? I completely missed it. It looks like an onside kick. Nonetheless, uh, the West team is going to be on offense. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, the two players to look for on the offense is uh, Jones from Missoula Sentinel. He can change the game. And, uh, and Carter, they have legit speed back there. And Duchesne can throw the ball, and he can run the ball. So be interesting to see how the East can respond to this type of talent. Yeah, Patrick Duchesne headed to Montana State next year and joined in the backfield by Tom Carter. Also, Bobcat bound in Bozeman. And they just had a monstrous year to the Helena Capital Bruins. Coach by the coach of the West, Kyle Mahelish. Duchesne fakes the handoff, rolling right, and he finds his target. That will be number three, Cameron Guernsey. How about a Bobcat to Grizzly connection? The Butte guy getting it started yeah, for the West team. I don't think Guernsey had a chance even in the womb if he was not going to be a receiver or not because we know the background on his dad. And so he's just destined to catch footballs. That's all there is to it. That's right. Cameron Guernsey, the son of Scott Guernsey, all Scott, big sky wide receiver receiver and punter for the Montana Grizzlies. Here's play number two. One for one so far for Duchesne. Looking over to the left side, just outside the reach of the Canadian. Oh, Canada, Willem Arsenault. There's two Canadian players joining these Montanans here in Butte for the Shrine game. You know, interestingly enough, Tom, um, Hellish, I, he wants to run the ball, and he's got the firepower to run the ball, but he's he's backing the East team up a little bit. And it would be interesting to see this secondary from the East because they're loaded with state champion wrestlers, and they are tough. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We're looking at the rosters. There's several state champion wrestlers on the East team, several state champion track stars on the West team. So a battle of speed, physicality up front and in the backfield in the secondary. This is OK. High snap there. Hands off to Tom Carter. His first touch of the day swallowed up by the East defense. But a gain of three yards will bring up third and seven. <laughs> we are on top of Naranji Stadium here trying to uh, get a tarp set up because the wind is coming through right as kickoff started. We thought we had beautiful skies, but the elements, you know, it's Montana football. Hey, it's Montana and you're in Butte. If you can't have a good time in Butte, it's your fault. Without a doubt, you, you'll see shots of the crowds. It is a packed house here at the Ranchi Stadium. Butte sure loves their football. Duchesne takes the snap, throws to the right, outstretched arms, incomplete, just outside the fingertips of Cameron Guernsey. So that'll bring up fourth down. We'll see what the West team does. You know, I talked to Coach Mihalish before the game, and he said he had met with the West coaches and talked about what they needed to do. They pulled film. They pulled film on Fergus just to see what type of <laughs> tendencies and defensively and offensively that they were going to have. And it looks to me that they've already found a hole. Yeah, Interesting that they were going to punt the ball here. They're on the 36, but Mihalish is a defensive coach. We'll take a look. It's Connor Rashad punting the ball. He's listed at six foot six out of Frenchtown. He's a wide receiver. Going to play basketball at Montana Tech. He's got a trebuchet of a leg. So we'll see where this one ends up. I'd be checking a fake here real quick. It's Xander Dean, quarterback out of Sydney. And they punt it out of bounds. Marked at the nine yard line. So that's where the East team will have their first chance. You know, what's interesting about when you coach this game and you can bring your quarterback with you, that's a big deal, Tom. That's a very, very big deal. And Norzaline has a stable of players. Like I said, he brings the boys from the Snowies down, and uh, they've had success the last two years. They know how to win. Monstrous game. Derek Lear, 21-2 and two as a head coach in Fergus County at Lewistown High School. Undefeated state championship season. And they have a stable of guys. Five representatives from the Eagles. 
on this team. And it's actually going to be Jake Casagranda of B uh, Bozeman under center. And there he is. And I'll tell you what, number 52 is maybe one of the, if not the best defensive lineman I've watched play in Montana. He's going to Montana State. He's a Gatorade player of the year. And if they don't have a plan for him, he will destroy him, just like what happened there. And they'll move him all the way from the Canadian line to the Mexican border. <laughs> you won't see him in one spot all the time. That's Talon Marsh at a hell of a capital. Get this, 23 sacks on the year for the undefeated Capital High Bruins and Coach Mahalish. And he's, he broke a record. Guess whose record he broke? His own. He had 17 last year, 23 this year. So he is a problem for the East offensive line. Casagranda rolling out under pressure. And he's going to be brought down, loses the football. I think they're going to call for a grounding too. But let's see. He's reaching for it. Nope. Oh, Dominic nope. He's Umile. asking. Was he out? There it is. There yep. it is. Grounding yep. call. So. East with a, a struggle offensively here in their first possession of the ball game. That was Dominic Umile out of Missoula Sentinel with the pressure and the uh, the forced uh, penalty for the East team. Coach Mahelish likes a three-man front. He likes to go with a 3-4-4. Four, four. And when he brings one or two of those linebackers up on the line of scrimmage, he plays games and he knows he can do a lot because Marsh is on the on the on the defensive line. And if you're an offensive line coach for the East, and being serious now, if you're an offensive line coach for the East, you have to have a plan for him because you can never leave him by himself. Yeah. He's just that good. Absolutely a monster. Just a guy that uh, Coach Sean Howe of the Montana State Bobcats calls a really, really good football player who any team inside Montana or out would be lucky to have, but he is headed to the Montana State Bobcats Big Sky Champions in 2022. Third in a country mile. Third in a country mile. Casagranda, oh, just out the outstretched arms. Boy, and they were coming too. He brought the pressure. That's the one thing about, you know, Coach Mihalish is he, he believes in pressure to see if uh, if Coach Lear is going to pick up and throw a few screens and, and see if they can back them off just a little bit. So that'll bring up fourth down and 30. Well, I'm glad I'm not made of sugar because I dissolve in about two seconds. The rain's coming on me fast. <laughs> There's Eli Grishel. He's back to punt as well, handling all kicking duties for the East team today at a CMR. Finished 11th at the state golf tournament this year. Heck of a golfer going to Rocky next year. Gets the punt off. Oh, ah, but the wind picks it up, and that is going to be a disastrous punt for the East team. Well, the West team will have the ball at the 20-yard line with 20 yards to go for a touchdown, and we will be right back at the Montana East-West Shrine game. So how exactly is Northwestern Energy delivering a bright future? Welcome back to Naranchi Stadium. The wind howling, the rain pouring down. It's Montana football, and the West team has 20 yards in front of them on their second possession of the game after a rough defensive or offensive possession for the East team. There's Patrick Duchesne again under pressure, evades the contact, throws. No one in the vicinity, though, so that's going to bring up second down and 10. You know, the one thing in this game is that's that's really challenging for the coaches is you have to adjust early and fast because, you know, even though you think you know what they're going to do, the talent level is so high that you can do some things that you normally would never be able to do because you don't have that many good players, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and um, so they're adjusting like crazy right now, both offensively and defensively, but they have live video. You never used to be able to do that. So now they can they can cheat and it's legal. Yeah, these rosters are, are certainly deep, no doubt about that. So there's not much these coaches can't do on the field with this uh, group of personnel. So Duchesne hands it off. Adam Jones. Adam Jones, there he is, the number two uh, leading rusher in the double-A this year out of Missoula Sentinel. He's also Montana State bound. You know, the scouting report on Jones is that he can get vertical now, and he's gone, that college speed. And uh, it, and they like, you know, Coach Mahelish and Coach Rayon, his offensive coordinator that's with him tonight, they like that inside trap game, and, and those pop, and they pop big. Makes the handoff, little play action, but... Duchesne oh! gets it off under pressure, but he will be picked off. Xander Dean. Xander Dean. Out of Sydney. Sydney, Montana. Wrestling champion. Rocky Mountain College Bear. 
with the interception. That's just what the East needed after a rough opening possession. They get the ball back at the 12 yard line. We talk about stars. Stars make plays, right? Yeah, taking a look there. Who was it applying the pressure? That's the one thing Duchesne probably team. will experience is that players are faster. And that's the one thing you notice as you go up. They're bigger, but the game is so much faster. And showed it right there. Yeah, you know, though this is an all-star game, no one is holding back here. These guys, this Shrine game, as you've been a part of, Greg, over the years, it's all about state pride. Well, it isn't. It's not a. It's not an all-star game. These guys are getting after it, and they, and they will all night long. Right, we got Gage Norris lead out of Lewistown at a quarterback. Pulls back the handoff, takes off, but he will be brought down. Yeah, by you, Caden Hansen out of Beaverhead County. You know, you really clearly right at the beginning of the game, you can see the speed on the West. And that's what I said from the beginning that, you know, speed all over the field on West offensively and defensively. It'll be, it'll be challenging for the East to get a hold of it. Yeah, quite a few track and field state champions for that West team. That was Caden Hansen. He signed with Carroll College. Also played in the State A basketball championship. Norsling from the shotgun, surveying the field. Under pressure again, he's going to go down for a safety. I couldn't see. I believe that was Dylan Root out of Jefferson County, who's also the kicker for this team. He came from the outside. Sorry, Colton Rice, I believe. Colton Rice out of Florence Carlton. State B champs. Brings the pressure from the outside, but again, that's what I... Coach Mihelish likes to do. He likes to have that three-man front walk four or five up and bring four, three, four, five-man pressure. And it's hard to pick up with nine practices, right? I mean, and having Talon Marsh on that line of scrimmage because they know who he is. So there's probably always a double team on Talon. Every time it's going to release somebody off the outside. You can see it there. Yeah, Colton Rice getting the sack, the safety. But West Norris Lane is going to have to get rid of the ball sooner. You know, the game's too fast. West team goes up 2-0, they'll get the ball right back. Wonderful start for Coach Kyle Mahelish and his crew. Taking a look, he's fired up on the sideline. Yeah, that, the East offensive line's gonna have to make some adjustments. It's gonna be a long night. This might be a long night. We've seen him do it though. As he said, that's Colton Rice. He signed with Montana Tech on the year he had 119 tackles that led class b by over 13 next closest was 13 tackles less two-time first state all state it's eli norse dylan kid with the ball Boy, the down the 40-yard line dylan beavers haven't had much success in football through the years have they <laughs> no doubt about that oh, dylan we... beavers heck of a program all right we're gonna go down to the sideline ashley washburn standing by with an update ashley what you got hey guys well we've obviously seen that defensive line get passed to the quarterback pretty easily on that east side but i gotta remember you guys are down one of the best guards in jackson tucker you did a story on him earlier today earlier this week tom wiley but you can obviously see how big of a loss it is not having him on that line and they ended up bringing up a guy that was a wide receiver, so they didn't add anybody on that line. Just an idea that you guys should look out for, but they're definitely missing a big guy in Jackson Tucker on that line. Without a doubt, Jackson Tucker, University of Montana commit. They're missing him. Tom Carter. With this the ball rain is not fun. For about three yards. That's where they're most comfortable. They want they want Carter on the perimeter. And he will make them pay. We, we talk about that speed on offense and defense. Tom Carter might be the fastest guy in this game. We're talking about a 200 meter dash state champion is a junior. 1,262 rushing yards. That's number one in double A. 16 touchdowns. That was number one in double A. 9.94 yards per carry. Obviously number one in class double A for Tom Carter, future Montana State Bobcat. Now we've got Jared Wilson in a quarterback in the snap. Nice play by Bryce Greeby out of Melstone. That's how you play. Six man guys getting it done. Love to see it. That's one of the there's, cool things about there's this. More Shrine people game. on the field than live in Melstone for, <laughs> for Greeby. No offense, Melstone, but. <laughs> 
for such a small community have, have produced some pretty incredible athletes. Of course, uh, Bryce's brother Brody plays for Montana State. Starting linebacker, had a heck of a year for the Bobcats. See in the Westry, their offense up now, they're no back. Empty backfield. Empty backfield for Jared Wilson out of Polson, the record setting Class A quarterback. And, Finds a wide open Tom Carter off his fingertips at first, but he hauls it in, and that's going to be a West first down. Well, you see West working the East left side, and it's interesting when you pick up tendencies, and they'll they'll find something that they want or a person that they want, and they'll stay with it until you shut it down. And so far, they've had success throwing the ball to their right side. Yeah, Tom Carter, uh, Tom Carter, wide open on that right side. Jared Wilson signed with Montana Tech. Now he passed for over 500 yards twice in his career. Air raid offense out in Polson. He's under pressure, escapes the pocket, finds Tom Carter, who's in space, caught from behind, but not before a pickup of nine yards. I think we got a little hold back here. I see both pressures coming. You know, he's not doing a bad job of getting pressure on the offense, too. Sure enough, there's a penalty marker. I was talking to Coach Mahelish before the game, and he said, "Watch Wilson." He said, "He's one, one of his, one of his, one of his most dangerous moves is when he pulls the ball and takes off. He's a great runner, without a doubt, without a doubt. You know, Wilson has the uh, state record for most points ever scored uh, at any level. Uh, we're talking mostly 11-man football, but he scored over 800 points accounted for, passing, running himself." This guy is a star in the making, signed with Montana Tech, future ore digger. He'll be playing right here for Coach Kyle Sampson at Bob Green Field. That's Jones again. What a one-two punch in the backfield for this West team. Adam Jones, Tom Carter, the number one and number two running backs in double A this year. You know, they're very patient with this too. You know, they've they've ran that ball, uh, that ran that play three different times in the same formation and they're just waiting for it because it's had so much success with it and and, uh, and Coach Mahelish and Coach Rayon are patient enough to stay with it. It'll, it'll pop. Second and 13, the 49 yard line. Wilson scrambling out. He's getting pressured. That's going to be Bryce Greeby yet again, flashing that speed, gets to the outside. Make sure Wilson doesn't get much farther. You know, that's speed on speed. That was a nice play in the open yeah. field to stay with that and take him down. Greeby, as we say, Greeby's in the house tonight. <laughs> Greeby in the house. Runs track, plays basketball. Does a little rodeo, too, out in Melstone. I don't think you have a choice. <laughs> I think you get your school books and a horse, and then you just, that's what you do. Yeah. You can bulldog a steer. A high school quarterback is no problem. Wilson dropped back. Under pressure again. Hit as he throws. Oh, that's that a great ball. That one's up in the air. And oh! Great ball. Not caught, though. Incomplete. But I don't know how he got that ball away. Wilson, but what that will great, bring up fourth down. What a great defensive play by Jet Boyce as the outside linebacker. I couldn't tell if he was playing safety, but he stayed with him all the way, and great defensive play. Jet Boyce out of Fergus High School. Another rodeo guy, comes from a rodeo family. Father Bill Boyce, multiple-time Montana Circuit Finals qualifier as a roper and bulldogger. Another one of those Lewistown boys who won a state championship this year. Connor Rashad back to punt. On the other end, it's going to be Xander Dean getting ready for the return. Short kick takes a bounce. Dean trying to track it down, oh and he's going to boy. fall. That's a rough turn of affairs, but East team will take over with 97 yards to go. There is 7.31 left in the first quarter. We'll be right back at the Montana East-West Shrine game here. Welcome back to Naranchi Stadium. The West team leading the East team 2-0 after an early safety. It's been all West so far. And how about this stat? East team so far in this game, negative 13 total yards. Rough start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to say the least. I think so. You know, they pulled themselves out, though. They got a turnover that saved a touchdown, and, and we've seen some great play out of Greeby, and he saved a couple big plays. So 
Um, here's their chance. Their, their backs are against the wall, as they say, but they have players. No doubt about it. Cole Taylor out of CMR. He's your quarterback. Also heading to Montana State. Not much doing there. Now's the time of the broadcast. We do want to mention at the bottom of your screen, plenty of ways to donate to the Shriners Children's Hospital of Spokane. You can visit mtshrinegame.org or you can call 1-8337-SHRINE. That's 1-8337-SHRINE. Now, I know we raised somewhere around $200,000, $220,000 last year. I know Greg and I would certainly love it if we beat that for the Shrine game here in Butte, America. I think they're expecting us to, or I may not get a call back. <laughs> Greg is getting updates throughout the uh, the evening on the telethon fundraising efforts. It's Cole Taylor with a pitch to Cade Boyd, Billings Central running back, heading to University of Montana. West playing as aggressive defense as they possibly can. A lot of games going on up front and a lot of pressure. Expect maybe Coach Lear to say enough of that and send somebody deep and see if they can get one over the top. Third and eight, we'll see. Cole Taylor does have a heck of an arm, one of the premier athletes in the state. His first series at quarterback. Three to his left, one to his right. Boyd in the backfield. Might get a little delay game here. It's getting Some close. Officials counting. Lots of barking, lots of signals. Gets the snap off. Cole Taylor under pressure as every East quarterback has been all night. He picks up four, but that's not going to be enough. Brings up fourth and five and another possession where the East team will have to punt. Ridger Jones out of Rodwater County came into the middle of the field and he came with a little bit of anger. Yeah, they just can't. The East offensive line just is not being able to handle the pressure that Wes is bringing forward at this time. Again, they'll find something, but they better find it soon. Starts and ends with Talon Marsh. They're doing their best. You haven't seen him get to the backfield, but uh, the attention paid to him is, is certainly opening some things up for that West defensive line. Sure is. There's a lot of pressure that's coming on the outside, and um, they may have to bring some one more running back in to get what they want to do, but that's part of that adjusting that I was talking about. You know, the speed of the game and the caliber of the athlete is so different. Taylor back to punt himself. Gets it off, it's a nice one. But it will still be fielded at midfield by Willem Arsenault, the Canadian. Got an Ernest Manning. That's one of the cool parts about this game. There's 40 players from the, the Montana and two players from Canada. We'll have more about them later in the broadcast, of course. But right now we're gonna take a commercial break. Five minutes, 40 seconds left in the first quarter of the 76 Montana East-West Shrine game. West leading two, nothing. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Butte. You see the raindrops on your screen. That's what our cameras are <laughs> are, 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 are doing right now. And uh, uh, Greg, you, you've been receiving some updates so far on the fundraising efforts for the Shrine Game. What, what, what are we at? Well, Joey Sider, my high school buddy who drove us to driver's ed and drive us home. <laughs> um, the telethon crew, Keith and Michelle Davey out of Kalispell and Shelly Taylor out of Kalispell and Ruby Pick of Missoula. Jim and Marlene Gray of Big Fork are helping on the telethon. They're already up to $7,000. Hey, $7,000. So, That's on top of the 33000 raised last night at the bank. What's so $40,000 so far for the Montana, uh, for the Spokane Children's uh, Hospital in Spokane, the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane. But we got a long ways to go. It's just the first quarter still. It was Jared Wilson. That was a, a lot of running for just a two-yard gain. Sticking with Wilson. He's unloading deep down the field, oh. but there's going to be a flag there. And now, someone was pulling on someone. A lot of contact yeah. in the vicinity of uh, pass interference on Travis Hadley. An 11 cherry out of Gallatin. Oh, give the hands up. That wasn't me. I wouldn't dream of something like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great ball by Wilson. Yeah, they're even asking the officials too. What do you mean? Wilson just did. Accurate, accurate quarterback. Yeah, he looks good, doesn't he? Sure does. Throws a nice ball. He's, he averages 30 yards a game. He 
He had 13 career 300-yard passing games. And how about that? Wow. That's at a the lot. high school level? Yeah, 12-minute yeah. quarters. Oh. That's a lot. I know they passed a lot, but but nonetheless, I mean, you're seeing it right now. It's not just the style of offense. This guy has some talent. High snap. Hands it off. Adam Jones once again works his way up for about a seven-yard gain. Yeah, you see that just the patience of Rayont with that offense, and he he's, he just had too much success with it, and backs learned that, that gel. You can see it starting to unfold. You know, he's sitting in a three-man front. I don't. I really don't think you're going to be able to stop a run game with a three-man front, even with walking him up. They're going to need a little more beef up there. A lot of beef on that offensive line as well. Wilson with Jones in the backfield once again. Two receivers to his right, hands it off to Jones. Oh, oh, oh. He is met like immediately that. by Aiden Martin, yeah. defensive end at a gallon. Yeah, bringing it. Five-man pressure. You know the game is so much fun, Tom, and it's it's so challenging because they just they're just moving players all the time. You know, way back when it was you know student body right, student body left, but that it's just the game is so fantastic to watch. Without a doubt. All right, we're going to go down to the field to Carter Culver who's standing by. Carter, what you got for us? As you guys were talking about up in the booth for a little bit, Jarrett Wilson on that two-yard scramble he had there probably covered about 20, 30 yards of actual turf there. One of the most dynamic players here for this West offense. Averaged over 300 yards passing per game and had over 800 points scored in his career with the Pirates. Absolutely ridiculous. State record in Montana. Should be a fun one to watch, and we'll send it right back out to you guys in the booth as we get going. Yeah, there hey, you thanks, go. Carter. Adam Jones. Adam Jones. Powerful, powerful runner. He's down inside the five-yard line. How smooth he is. He just takes you inside and then takes you outside. And yeah. Just wow. Picks a route and goes for it. Adam yeah. Jones. Cat bound. You know, uh, it's... It goes both ways, but Montana and Montana State seem to be uh, trying to pluck guys out of their respective cities. You know, Adam Jones, Missoula Sentinel going to Montana State. Uh, there's several uh, Bozeman players playing for the Grizzlies right now. I, I love the, the, the recruiting gamesmanship that, that some of these uh, in-school school, uh, colleges have. Yeah. yeah. You might call it gamesmanship. There are people might call it something else. Too. You, know, you don't know. Yeah, don't check the message boards. <laughs> right. <laughs> Careful who you're sitting next to when you're when you're having a, a, a beverage. All right. We're going to take a timeout here. It looks like East team going to talk about it. We're going to stay here. So we're looking at a two nothing game with the West team first and five from the five yard line. What do you draw up here? Well, I, I think you did what you did last time. You just put more people on the line of scrimmage that you can and and hope you can contain them from the outside. Yeah, we're, we're looking at that offensive line for the West team. And, you know, we, we do want to shout out some of the guards and some of the tackles as well. We got Austin Beeler. He's heading to the Grizzlies. As well, we do want to mention uh, the fundraising. Please, folks, during these down minutes before between plays, if you got the time, open your hearts, open your wallets, call that phone number on the bottom of your screen, one 7 shrine or you can go online as well and donate, mtshrinegame.org. That's mtshrinegame.org. We want to set records. Butte is known for their generosity and their spirit and their support of Montana and the Children's Hospital in Spokane. And they're out in force tonight despite a little bit of rain in the forecast. All right, here we go. West team in business. First and five, Wilson at quarterback. Jones in the backfield, hands it out. Oh, fakes the handoff. Under pressure again. Wow. That's a nice call by the defensive coordinator from the East. He just didn't buy it, and they were bringing pressure. Great play. Hunter Charbonneau out of Fairview, Montana. Coming out of that defensive end position, but there's a lot of guys on the line of scrimmage, so basically they're just telling the West, you're either going to throw the ball or you're not going to do anything. One of those small-town guys who's going to be playing for the Bobcats next year. Won a state title as a freshman, advanced to the semifinals last year at the eight-man level in 2022. The handoff goes to Jones. He breaks through the wow. first level before being laid out. Yeah, he he went back. vertical, and then he was horizontal in a hurry. Man, is he talented. Wow. 
Asher Fettis of Belgrade High School, the only Belgrade representative on the East roster. He was an alternate, actually. A couple weeks before the game, he got a call, said there's an injury. Why don't you come up to Great Falls to practice and then head to Butte for the Shrine game? That's always the cool thing, those folks who are left off that Christmas Day roster getting their opportunity to shine at the East-West Shrine game with some all-star competition. Wilson and Jones once again, and they're sticking with it, going to Jones. Swallowed up by the defense. You're just really patient with it, just the same play. Inside, outside, they're doing a little bit of um, movement with their offensive line and loading one side or the other, and nothing really fancy. Well, that'll bring up fourth down. It's 2 nothing. pretty low scoring so far in this one. We're going to toss down to Ashley Washburn, who's got a little bit of history on some of the high scores and the record well, scores in this ballgame. I actually don't know what those low scores are because that is a Carter fact. Uh, Carter's going to join in a bit. I just wanted to quickly talk about Hunter Charbonneau. If you see him playing with a bigger edge today, he's got a little ammunition, or should I say it's because he has the ammo box. This is something that Coach Lear had started at the beginning of this week. Everyone on the East team wrote down their why, and at the end of this week, they decided to give it to somebody who represented what it means to be out in this field tonight, and it was given to Hunter Charbonneau last night, and I think he's playing with some edge tonight, guys. Hey, thanks, Ash. Yeah, we'll have Carter mention those scores, but Hunter Charbonneau voted most inspirational on the East team, so he's taking home that ammo box. I got a chance to go to the East practice uh, earlier this week, and they, they broke down every huddle on that ammo box. They uh, put it in the middle of the field. They carried it out. They touched it before taking the field today. So just an incredible tradition coming over from Lewistown and Fergus High School that Derek Lear brought to this East team. And you that's know, one of the cool things. You know, it, you only it, have a week. You got to get them uh, motivated somehow and, and bring them together. It is, and in the day in the life of a player at, the, at their camp here. They start at 7 in the morning. They're on the field at 9. They practice from 9 to 11. They go to lunch. They they have an hour off. Then they practice from 2 to 4 or so. Then they go to dinner. And then they have a third practice at night. So, you know, the effort that these guys put forth um, is just phenomenal. Uh, and, and, you know, this is a big thing for Montana, and it goes to a great cause. But, you know, I thank the athletes for their dedication. And because it is, there's a lot of dedication to coming in, the coaches and all that goes with it. So hats off to them. It's a short week and a long week. You see the West team up 5 nothing after the field goal. Let's go down to Carter Culver now, who does have those facts about some of the scoring numbers in this uh, Montana East-West Shrine game. Yeah, when, when it comes to that lowest scoring game of all time, that takes us back to 1963. That lowest score was seven points, and we've still got a lot of football left to play, but 5-0, something to potentially keep your eyes on as this game progresses. Obviously, seeing a little bit of offensive spark going on both sides here after uh, that defensive slugfest to begin things, but should be interesting to see how this shakes out as West holds on to an unusual 5-0 lead right now over the East with just under two minutes to play here in this first quarter, and the rain's starting to die down a little bit. That should about do it from down here. Back up to you guys in the booth. Yeah, I think for the East to find some success, Tom, they've got it. They've, they, they have to be able to handle the West pressure, and the West pressure's been phenomenal on them. So it'll be interesting to see what type of adjustments Coach Lear's making. What kind of adjustments can you make when, when you just have those monsters on the other side of the football? I haven't seen one screen yet. Anything to slow them down. There we go. <laughs> I think they're going to have to see a little bit more of that just to get their game going because they have athletes on that side. It's just that, that defensive front and the pressure that Coach Mihalich is bringing has been relentless. Taylor to Luke Smith, tight end out of Bozeman High School, also heading to Montana State, a Bobcat to Bobcat connection. You know, there was a time in this game where you, was, you couldn't blitz. It was against the rules to blitz. Is that right? Yeah, okay. absolutely. Boy, the way this game's changed over the years, it's fun talking to some of the old-timers about their memories and, and histories with it. All right. You so call me an old-timer? Is that what you call me? <laughs> I didn't mean that. I'm not talking about oh, you. I yeah, thought, yeah. Oh, right, all uh, right. I just yeah, took yeah, that no, wrong. You're, you're I'm still... too sensitive. I've, I've, got a, I've, got a, I've got to toughen up. I'm sorry about that, Tom. You know, I'm, I'm going to retire here, but I didn't know I, knew I was an old-timer. But, okay, that's all right. Greg Upham, folks. Best color guy in the game. Third and short. Now, third this is the short. first time that, that the East has been third and short. So. Got a little something going. I mean, it is, despite the, the struggles they've had on offense, it is only a 5 nothing ball game. Cole Taylor takes it, takes off himself just back to the line of scrimmage. Don't think he got near enough for the, the first ball. down. And uh, I, think that, I think he snapped the ball before he was ready. 
Might have been, yeah. He, he didn't look like he was ready for that one. Took off, so that'll bring up fourth and short. Fourth and short at the 32. And Taylor did punt the last one, but uh, yeah. looks like they're keeping the offense on the field. They are. They are. We'll yeah. see what happens. Okay. Cole Taylor, quarterback. He's a runner, though. See, he is empty backfield. Great athlete. Everybody's you know, looking to see. Played quarterback for CMR, but recruited as an athlete to Montana State, so we'll see. And he Quick does. Kick. He gets the punt off. He did that a lot this year for the CMR wrestlers and Coach Dennis Morris. I, don't, I think if I was going to punt the ball, I'm just going to punt the ball. You know what I mean? Because they only gained 18 yards. Sometimes they trick themselves. I'm just... Old school. Just yeah. punt the ball. Uh huh. Put it back there. There's no one there. All right. For Didn't all give of us old timers. <laughs> Apologies. The, the youngest old timer I know, at least at heart. I'm good all with right. it. <laughs> all right. We're at the end of the first quarter here at the Montana East West Shrine game. The West team on top, five to nothing on your Town Pump scoreboard. We will be right back to the Ranchy Stadium of Butch. For so The following is a special presentation of MTN, the Montana Television Network. Welcome to the Montana East-West Shrine Game. These great athletes for the East and West squads have been nominated by players and coaches for a chance to play in this best of the best game. Tonight's game is played to help raise much needed money for the Shriners Hospital for Children in Spokane. Montana Shrine Game has become one of the top Shrine Games in the nation for hospital donations. Tonight, we're proud to bring you stories of Montana families who have benefited from Shriners Hospitals for Children. To donate, please call the number on your screen at any time. Operators are standing by. My name is Bob Gagne, and I'm from Great Falls, Montana. I'm Hunter Welcome, and I'm from Kalispell, Montana, and I'm here to interview with my cousin about the Shrine game. My injury was I had two bones in my foot fused together and it was called torsal correlation. And my treatment was I had to get the bones removed out of my foot. My experience at the hospital was really good because they treated me really well there. When I was at the hospital, all of the doctors were fantastic. When I was not receiving treatments, I was playing basketball or playing with my little nephew. My prognosis for the future is that I need to get my right foot done because I only had my left foot done. My favorite activity is to play basketball and I would not be able to do that without the treatment from the hospital. During my cousin's uh, procedures, uh, they treated the family, my family, very well. We were all very comfortable. I felt like we were a part of a big thing. And thanks to the local staff of uh, the Shriners, we had our travel expenses paid for, so we had no stress for payments or anything. It was, it was great. I think the Shriners are good people. They treat everybody well, and the hospital is a great place. My name is... Sends it a tight end. Duchesne takes it himself, works his way around to the left, but not going to pick up much. Gain of two. Nice play again by Jet Boyce out of that linebacker position. He tripped him up. That play was open. Uh oh, we got a player on the field. Update on our um, donations. Someone by calling themselves Tom's mom. I, have no, I don't know who's the last name. Oh, Tom's your mom. mom. Oh, Tom's mom. Arlene donated. Wiley. Okay. Yeah. How about that? What's first name? Arlene Wiley. Arlene yeah, she, she Wiley. Called in, yeah. Uh, made a point to let everyone know that. Her son Tom is calling the East West Shrine game and gave a donation. That's all it takes, folks. My Call that phone number, 1 833 7 Shrine. 1 833 7 Shrine. You got any updates from Joe? Yeah, Joey's giving me, they're up to $9,080 now. Hey. So thank you, everybody. 
you know, this goes to a great cause. And you always hate to see what we're seeing on the field right now. And it's that's the risk that you, you have when you play in these games. And um, it just that's just too bad. It looked like an ankle injury. Uh, but if anything helps with the with the telethon. So thank you all for supporting. And hopefully we can keep that going. You know, fortunate situation at the moment. Uh, these all star games, you, you don't want anyone to get injured, especially people who have you know, future games to play. Um, that's why some of those those players who were announced as uh, injuries before the game, you know, maybe it wasn't that serious, but you don't want to risk it for, for something like this. It's, it's a wonderful, wonderful game and a wonderful cause. And we will be right back. We're going to take a quick break. Five nothing West team leads 14 06 left at a West. And we're back at Naranji Stadium. We still got an East player down on the field. He's getting tended to by some of the best trainers in the state. You know, it's an all-star game. So you have best players, best cheerleaders, best coaches, best training staff out there doing their best to make sure that everyone gets out of this game healthy. In one of the best football towns in America. <laughs> and I was uh, telling, I think I was telling you earlier, I actually played on Naranchi Field when it was a dirt field. And it was a dirt field. It wasn't there were patches of grass. We came up from Great Falls, and our coach was Mike Tarr, a long time coach and a Butte guy and he said you guys will be playing on a dirt field and I thought yeah we haven't played on a dirt field it was a dirt field it was a lined <laughs> dirt field and it actually had glass and stuff like that and people say oh yeah well you know old timers know what glass and stuff but it was and <laughs> when, when you hear the term Butte tough it's Butte tough that's just it it's just yeah. the way it is <laughs> without a doubt Butte is is uh, truly the, the, one of the more unique cities in Montana in the entire country. Uh, and they love their football. They love their history. Uh, dirt field, I mean, obviously, Naranchi, the most historic, most famous stadium in the entire state. Just a beautiful view out here. You got the Lady of the Rockies. She's the... Behind us, you have Uptown View. She's the... Uh, the <laughs> truly the... The best uh, football fan. She gets the best seat in the house. We do want to apologize to some of the viewers who'd lost us for a bit. We had a couple technical issues, but we are back now. Uh, Stretcher comes out in the field to take the injured player away. Looks like just a lower body injury, so we hope he's okay. That's 45. Chris Garcia out of Chris Billings Garcia West. Chris Garcia Billings West. So he, he's going to be playing for Montana Tech. Let's hope he can get healthy. And we're going to be right back with more East-West Shrine game. On the other side of this break, 5 nothing West. We'll see you. Welcome back to Butte. That is Chris Garcia getting uh, stretchered off the field. Looks like a lower body injury. His team's coming out to greet him. Future Montana Tech or Digger. Got a lot of football left in his career, so he's going to be headed off to get looked at, checked out. First team All-State long snapper. You know, he wore the Michael Guelph number four jersey for Billings West this year. That was given to... Uh, the, the most inspirational player on, in, on, on the West Bears uh, in honor of a former standout player who died in a car wreck back in 2009. So that's certainly a uh, motivational, inspirational loss for the East team. But we uh, just certainly hope that, that he's okay and that uh, he's back in the speech playing football in the fall right here in Butte for the Montana Tech Ordiggers. That's the one thing about this sport, right? You can't call your own fouls, and it's a it's intense, and you can't play it any other way, and it's just an unfortunate circumstance. But again, it goes back to what I was saying earlier. You know, the the dedication by the players to come in and give this week, and uh, most of them, if not all of them, have scholarships. They're headed to college, and uh, still still giving up what they need to give up for what a great cause. And so, hats off to them. Yeah, absolutely. All right, we're going to get back to the action now. It's, it's uh, third. third and eight from the 25-yard line. Patrick Duchesne, Tom Carter in the backfield. The handoff goes to Carter, and he's got some space, finds some outside, runs into his own guy, though, and going to be short of a first down, picks up about three extra yards, so brings up a fourth down for the West team. I don't think he saw Willem Arsenault that was blocking out there for him because I thought he was going to dip inside and then go outside, but he must have been must have been looking inside. He just didn't see that. It looked like he, he might have had a lane to pick up some extra yards, but just straight into the back of Willem Arsenault, the Canadian player. They, they play with 12 up in Canada, so. Fourth and five. Fourth and five, and they're going for it. Why not? It's an all-star game. 
Duchesne with Carter to his left, two receivers to his left, one to his right. And he is under pressure, gets it, and he throws, and it's caught! Picked out of the air. What a play. First down for the West team. And you see what size can do. Dylan Christman out of Helena High. 6'6", 220 pounds, and he used all 6'6", 220 pounds. But what a great catch. What a, what a great play by Duchesne. I mean, he just kept that alive, and there was pressure coming off the outside. So yeah. he's feeling that. last In the last series, he probably would have got sacked, but he knew he had to get rid of that ball. About three defensive players about to bring him back, but that is uh, look who's in the backfield, Dylan Marsh. Christman. Oh, Talon Marsh in the backfield. This is one of my favorite parts of any Shrine game. When you get the, the big package, when you're close to the goal line, you put the big fellas in there in short yardage situations, and Talon Marsh is a load, not doing much there, but fun to see that. Yeah, we watched the Chicago Bears do it with the fridge how many times, I and mean, he became a national phenomenon, right? They, yeah. they sub him out after one play. Didn't go where they want, but who knows? When they get close to that goal line, might see him back in there. The Bobcat coaches might not have appreciated that play as much as much as Dallin Marsh did. I can tell you that. <laughs> in fact, they might be on a heart machine right now. Of course, Coach Brett Vegan and the uh, and his staff watching this one on home, at home. As are Bobby Houck and the Grizzly coaches as well. Duchesne takes off, and he's got some room. Dives for the pylon. What's it say? We don't even well, they, they signal the touchdown. Well, I think there's a little bit of a disagreement here. One ref said touchdown. One official said short. Oh, a little holding call. Holding call. Uh -oh. Okay, that's what it was. Oh. That's a goal. No penalty. Take a look at that replay. Canceling scores. Yep, surely. Good call. Wipes away an incredible effort by Duchesne to get to that pylon, but as it is, it'll be second down. West just has so many weapons on the field. They run the ball. Now the, the passing game is open to them. You know, they really do. Second and 20 for the West team. They do. They have weapons all over the place. Shane looking to his right has a man open but oh broken up by the East defense so that one wasn't quite uh, on target nevertheless gonna bring up third and 20 we're going on to Ashley Washburn who, who has an update on, on the injury to Chris Garcia Billings West yeah Chris Garcia is officially in the ambulance and they're headed to the local hospital I just wanted to let you guys know they did mobilize his right leg before they got on that stretcher but the biggest thing that I saw is the Montana Tech coaching staff ran over really quick and gave him a dabs up before he got onto that ambulance which was really great to see he's in high spirits which you always love to report and then the second one I want to report really quick is safety Travis Hadley it's questionable to return he's got a a left arm sling on with ice. They're hoping to kind of calm down whatever injury it is, but he is questionable to return. Thanks so much, Ashley. Class act is that Montana Tech coaching staff led by Kyle Sampson. That was a, a strike over there, but uh, Chrisman couldn't hang on to that one. Waited for him to just defense. come across the middle, yeah, and he was just a little, a little off the mark there. That feels wet now, so that ball... It was, it was funny that we got just about every kind of weather that you possibly could. And then right when I think it was right when you spoke is when the storm came in and the wind blew. And I, I don't know, you might have special powers or something. I don't know. But I think I jinxed it early by saying we're going to have a nice night. Fourth down. That's going to be Dylan Roots out of Jefferson booting in the field goal. And hey, the West East team is on the sorry. That's the West team adding to their lead. Eight nothing in the early going here. We're going to take a commercial break at the Montana East-West Shrine game. West team on top of the East team. Ain't nothing on your town pump scoreboard. We will be right back to Naranchi Stadium in view for more Shrine game action. Welcome back to the Montana East-West Shrine game. Want to give a shout out to our stat master here up here in the booth with us, Dante Williams. He lets us know that the West team with 103 yards of offense so far. The East team, one yard of offense so far. It's, it's borne out on the field, surely. Negative five rushing yards. Been a one-sided affair, but it's still only an 8 nothing ball game. Yeah, you know, if, but if I'm if, from the East, right, I have to change. Something, mm -hmm. something needs to change. i got to find something 
to get going. There's another possession for the East. Trickery looks like, oh, they did hand it off, and that's going to be Cade Boyd. He's got some running room, and he is across the 30, Ooh, but there is a flag on the field. And flag, and the flag. Nice little twist there. I like it. Like you said, you got to try something. Might as well do it on special teams. That faked me out for a second. Probably see wait on the signal. Casa Grande in now, I would imagine. Ah, yeah. That's going to get backed up. Oh boy. Another self-inflicted injury for the East team. They're going to get backed up pretty far. You know, I had the chance to watch Casa Grande play. Uh, Bozeman played Glacier, and I thought he was the difference in the game. I really did. He's, when I'm talking to the coaches, he, he, they preferred to him as a gamer, and he is. Yeah, heck of a season to lead the Bozeman Hawks to a state championship game before losing the capital, but Casa Grande, a huge part of that. As he pitches to Cade Boyd, Casa Grande, he'll be heading to Montana Tech, play quarterback there, but is a senior season, 2,743 passing yards, 33 touchdowns, just six interceptions. So an accurate quarterback, a talented quarterback, and someone that, that Kyle Sampson and the Diggers are going to enjoy having in Montana at Tech for a number of years. Casagranda with Boyd in the backfield. Cade Boyd, future University of Montana Grizzly, alongside his building central teammate, Clay Oven. He was selected for this game, couldn't make it. But what a one-two punch that the Rams had this year, making it to the state championship game. Oh, Casagranda just a little far. Yeah, just, you know, not on the, not on the same page. You see the receiver going back and um, Matthew Gullick and saying, that, well, I, but I didn't see that. East struggling a little bit, just trying to find a direction to go. Third and 10 for the East team. Trailing 8 0, 11 12 to go in the second quarter. Got to find a spark somewhere. But no dice so far against this stout West defense. See Marsh lined up on the right as a three technique. Keep an eye out for him. Always a problem. Casa Grande. Just another miscommunication. He had a wide open Cole Taylor. A quarterback from CMR playing receiver on that one, but just couldn't connect. And that's going to bring up another fourth down for the East team. And a punting situation, no doubt about that. Two dangerous returners, Jones and Carter. We talked a lot about them. Got three returners in the backfield. Yep, Kellen like. Beller or uh, Willem Will Arsenault. Arsenault, Canadian guy. Jones and where's Ernest Manning, Alberta? Somewhere in Calgary. In uh, Calgary? Yeah, it's Ernest Manning is the school in Calgary. There's about a dozen high schools in Calgary. And uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh boy, uh -oh. there's Adam Jones tripped up by Bryce Greeby. He's been a bright spot. I'll tell you what, East unit. if Bryce Greeby wasn't on the field, I think we'd see two more touchdowns. Honestly, that was a game saving or a touchdown saving tackle. Yeah, he's got he's some had speed, a couple boy. of those. Yeah, he's, he gets to the edge right quick. Those creepy boys, awfully, awfully fast. That is legit because we know how fast Jones is. So mm -hmm. to catch him, you got some speed, boy. Track stars all around in this game. That's another cool thing about the All-Stars in this East-West Shrine. Again, they're all multi-sports stars. You know, it's not just football. It's wrestling. It's basketball. It's track and field. It's rodeo, even. Patrick it Duchesne. And he's picked off. Oh, Look at this. Oh, this is the spot that he's needed. Garrett Metrione from state champion belt. The linebacker. Wow. How about that Husky boy getting down to the three-yard line? And the East is alive. Trailing 10 on the three-yard line. They're in business. What and, a play. And he baited it. He waited. He didn't, he didn't overplay that. He saw it coming the whole way. What a great play. You see it on your replay here. He just held him. And there you go. Go Huskies! And ahead of steam, Garrett Metrione on the state champion eight-man belt Huskies. They won their first title since 1994. All-state linebacker played for Matt Triplett. 
in his first year with the Belt Huskies. Obviously, Jeff Graham, now the women's basketball coach at Montana Tech, led the Huskies for a lot of years. He goes, but he laid a good foundation. Triplett takes over, and the Belt Huskies win a championship. Garrett Metrion gets into the Shrine game. He intercepts the West team and puts the East three yards away from their first points of the game. Here's Norsley. Takes it himself, follows his running back. Uh, I like the play call. I like the play call. And he powers and he's in. in. That's a touchdown. Yeah. How about it? The yeah. East team, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. After a rough stretch in the first one and a half quarters, they are on the board one field uh, extra point away from cutting this lead to one. Wow. Boy, how about this from Joey Sider, my guy inside. 11,085, and the Dennis and Phyllis Washington Foundation is matching up to $20,000 this year, up from 10000 last year. Wow. Wow. That uh -huh. is a big deal. That's huge. Wow. What, what generosity. But that means every dollar that you donate, folks, by calling the number on your screen or visiting the website, mtshrinegame.org, is going to be matched up to $20,000 by the Dennis and Phyllis Washington Foundation. There's a... Uh, what a Taylor great gift. Booting in the extra point. And it is a one-point game just like that. That's just how like fast that. things can change. Metrion, you see Matt Van Tresca over there cheering on his team. How about that? Matt Van Tresca came from Missoula Sentinel. And don't quote me, but I think this is the case. I don't think he won a game in high school. Goes to Carroll, and he's part of two national championship games. Talk about a turnaround. Wow. Yeah. I, I do love all the Frontier Conference connections on these coaching staffs. You know, uh, Matt Triplett, we mentioned him. He won a number of national titles at Carroll as well. And uh, Derek Lear, East team coach, played for MSU Northern, and some of his assistant coaches on this team. Daryl DeBolt of Haver, and the head coach at Haver, Jake Eldridge, they were both on staff under Mark Sampson at MSU Northern when Lear was there, so they used to coach him. Now they're on his staff. That's awesome. Just uh, the Montana coaching community is, is such a brotherhood in such a small world. It is. It is. Do you think Coach Mahelish is talking to Coach Rayant, his offensive coordinator, asking him, why did you run that last play? Do you, you know, I wonder if that I happened. I could see that. I could see that. All right. We'll see how the West responds after the East just changed the entire tenure of this game. Jones, not much doing. Brought down about the 20-yard line, and that's where the West will take over and try to respond to that lightning strike of an interception and touchdown from the East team. And Garrett Metrio, what a huge play. You know, interesting from the storyline when we started, I, we said the West has speed, right? It's got speed all over the field, but the East has toughness. You know, all those state championship wrestlers, and you, you could just see it. And that's what's, that's what's shown through for them. That's what's keeping them in the game is that East secondary. Um, they just keep answering the bell. Three undefeated state champion teams represented on that East squad. We're talking Big Sandy, Belt, and Lewistown. Not a blemish. And there's Wilson taking off. And he's got some room to run. Finally brought down by Metrion, but not before a 15-yard pickup. Smooth. A smooth athlete, like I said earlier in the broadcast, Coach Mahelis said when he pulls the ball, watch out because he can fly. You know, it takes a while for both teams to settle in, too. I mean, it really does. You know, that defensive change now changing for the East, bringing more pressure. Wilson to Carter wide open, wow. and he turns on the Jets. That's another pickup of a first down. We're going to go down to the sideline for Carter Culver. Carter's got an update for us. What's up, Carter? Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, b going back a few minutes, back to that West Drive that put them up 8-0. Uh, broke, broke that streak for a potential lowest scoring game of all time. But Dylan Chrisman, tight end from Helena down there, he had that huge play down there, right in, got up close and personal with me. And, man, that two-time All-State long snapper, All-State tight end, All-State defensive tackle, just absolute monster of a man. It took four or five East defenders right there to bring him down and just absolute wild play. Reminiscent of Marshawn Lynch as a diehard Seahawks fan, but just phenomenal player to be watching throughout this game. That should just about do it from down here. Back up to you guys. Hey, thanks, Carter. Yeah, Crispin going beast mode. They list him at 6'6", 260. Signed with the University of Montana Western. He'll be a Bulldog next year. 6'6", 260. Right? That's you and I stacked on top of each other. 
and more even more weight because I didn't I didn't eat that much today <laughs> I didn't yeah we talked about just how how big these guys are yeah they're, they're, they seem to be getting bigger they're so athletic for the size they carry around so the West has a heck of a drive going but five yards they're pushed back here's Wilson again looking over the middle takes off pocket collapses can't find his intended target Jay Stenson tight end out of Butte Montana Wilson showing a lot of composure there he wasn't he he had room to run he just kept looking and looking it's hard to throw it's hard to run to your right when you're a lefty and throw to your right Jared Wilson just so much talent he owns every every single passing record at Polson High School that's how would you like to have been a DB from the other team knowing he was rolling into town that night? What do you do? Well, I think you change sports. <laughs> there we go. It's back to Jones. Jones Squirts out. Back to about the original line of scrimmage, maybe a yard more to bring up third and nine. Coach Rant doing a nice job of calling the offense. He's keeping them off balance. They, East jumps into their into a, more on the front line and trying to stop the run, and then he runs outside and Oh, smart calls. They may be audible from the line. It's hard to do, but these guys are so well schooled in this game. Eight twenty nine left in the ball game. Third and nine from the forty eight. And he unloads the football and he's got a man, but he can't quite get to that ball. It's a little bit off. Eli Norse out of Dillon. Just uh, two steps behind where that was, but that was a strike. There's a great defensive stand by the East. That touchdown gave them a little bit of life, Tom. They're back in the game, and we've got a game on our hands, 8-7. to seven. Without a doubt, the West gets two first downs real quick, but then the East defense holds, and they'll get another shot to do some damage in this game. 8-19 eight eight left. It's... Xander Dean, three-time state wrestling champion. Back to receive the punt. Connor Rashad, future Montana Tech basketball player, puts it at the 15-yard line, and that's where the East will try to answer back and build off some of this momentum following the interception and touchdown and the three and out, or the the uh, the. the the defensive stand that they just put together and the yeah. tenor of this game has absolutely changed. Yeah, you know, and one of the other big things with the loss of Garcia is he's their deep snapper. And, you know, in a, in a game like this where you probably don't have another deep snapper, um, that could be very crucial in the long run for them. So see if the East can, can keep some momentum going here. And they've only had one yard before, before that touchdown. <laughs> Yeah, long snappers are, are, are a vital thing that sometimes get overlooked in the game of football. But, I mean, if you have a good long snapping career, they've, there's been folks who've made it to the NFL before. Ken Amato from Montana State had a heck of a career. And the East team, wow. Yeah, a little, little different offense there. They stack four on the outside. Norris leaned to Boyd. And just like that, it's another first down for the East team. Oh, they have their best hurt. offensive series going just one play later. And you got to hurry up offense. You got no huddle. Wondering when that was going to come in. Like you said, just changing things up. They have the uh, the options and they have the opportunities to, and the talent to make adjustments. And they sure have. And it's paying dividends. Norsley looking to his right. He's got a man just outside the reach. A little bit of contact. No penalties. Nice coverage by Kyle Holter out of Bu out of Glacier. That was Royce or, Robinson. Or out of Butte Central. Excuse me. So was it Royce Robinson going to go a, play basketball? That's right. Yeah, we're going to play basketball. This is his final ever football game. He's had a wild, <laughs> wild uh, last couple weeks. He was committed to play at Carroll College, but uh, head coach there, Curtis Paulson, left. So he opened up his recruitment. He's landed on the Montana State Bobcats as a walk-on. That portal's really changed the game, so to speak, hasn't it? No doubt. Norsley, and oh, he's hit in the backfield. Dominic Umale, he had a sack earlier in this game. He's another one who's just uh, finding some, some room and some opportunities to get in the backfield and yep. wreak havoc on the quarterback and the offense. Yeah. 
West staying in a four-man front. They third and 11. Every, handle everything from there, so big third down. Just under seven and a half to go in the second quarter. It's Norslean in a quarterback. And he is under pressure, but he finds his man, dumps it off to Cade Boyd, who's got no room to run. Quick close from the West defense, and that'll bring up another fourth down. Well, you really see that team speed, don't you? Cameron Shaw out of Glacier. I mean, he's he's out there. Pressure guy. That's what I was saying earlier in the broadcast. You know, the game is it's so fast, Tom, and they and it you, you really don't get to play if you're not fast, even if you're a big guy. It's just the, the game is speed and um, you see it's fun to watch, but but it just is really uh, an amazing how it's evolved. Yeah, there's uh, no shortage of, of bulk and athleticism on either side of the ball speed to get there as uh, Taylor gets the punt off. To be hauled in by Willem Arsenal. Oh, Canada. What can he do with that football? Not very much. How about Tyler Shane from Chinook? First time we've called his name. Yeah. Oh, Oops. and he popped the ball and loose. And he popped the ball loose. And, and he's a state champ wrestler. A two-time state champ wrestler. Yeah. Well, number one of the <laughs> some tough guys wrestlers on are, that East team. Wrestlers are on the field, I'm telling you. Still you know, they're not the always, signal. if you're around wrestlers very often, they're not always real happy people, and they have bad ears. But don't ever make fun of their ears. I mean, they're <laughs> proud of them. They love their ears and the way they, they whatever. All right, so it looks like the West does uh, retain possession of the ball. We're going to go down to Ashley Washburn on the sideline. Well, I think you guys have been reading my mind because I wanted to talk about Royce Robinson and his early, this commitment he just had to Montana State. But I will add, I talked to him earlier this week about just how that conversation worked out. He said he actually reached out to Matt Logie and showed interest in wanting to play for the Cats. And I had to ask him, you know, what's it going to mean to get back inside that brick? Because he obviously has some prior experience winning a championship there. And he said, you know what, he obviously has good memories there. And he's hoping to make more and said, you know, he knows how to win. And I will say, I don't think he's ever lost a game in his senior year, and I know he's trying to do that for the East team tonight, but heck, we'll see what happens. Robinson on the East team, uh, you know, he didn't play football for three years, but he knew that the Lewistown Eagles were going to be good going into his senior years. He was like, hey, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, why Ends not? up being an all-state receiver and, and defensive back. And uh, then they go on to win a championship in basketball, too. Undefeated in football, undefeated in basketball. Won a couple all-star games, so he's never lost a oh, high school game of any sort. And there is a flag. That one's clear. That's a that's a face mask and a half. He almost ripped his head off. Came straight back. So that's going to push the West team forward 15 yards. You know, an interesting stat. I, I, I wonder how many of all the players on the field, how many wins they've had as with their team versus losses. Because there are some undefeateds out there in these state championship games, right? And or one or two losses. I bet, I bet it's an amazing statistic. The number of wins <laughs> that they have versus losses. Yeah, I mean, we're talking career wins. We're talking season wins. I mean, these are winners all around. You know, you only get the best of the best, and clearly, if you have the best talent on these teams, you're going to rack up some of the wins. I mean, we, we talked about on the East team, there's three undefeated state champions represented. That's quite a bit of wins. All right, so first and 10 from the 33-yard line. Wilson just struggling, and Chrisman comes down with it. Another incredible play there's, for Wilson. There's wow. your boy, Carter. <laughs> <laughs> big hands, big big target. He is a low number 87. 6'6, 260. Wonder what the Costco bill is at that house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the amount of calories to feed these, these high, large high school humans. Burned through about 10,000 a day. You got three practices, conditioning. There we go. They hand it off to Tom Carter. He's got some space. Good blocking from the offensive line up front, but can't quite get the edge. Defense springs him down, but it's not before a pickup of about four. That's the one thing East, the East has is they have speed. They have speed on the outside, and they can run with them. Yeah, it's been led by Greeby so far. Yeah, 
So Sid, second and nine, four minutes, 35 remaining in the uh, before halftime. Neither team can really find a gel, can they? They're just they're kind of spit and sputter, and they're like an old car that just can't get going here. <laughs> yeah. Second really. half, it'll look different. They're just trying to play, but they just they just can't. Very and, much so. It, it kind of traded, uh, taking turns, being a little stagnant at times. Wilson fakes the handoff, bursts up the middle. He's got some room to run. Finally brought down, but not before picking up a first down. It's going to be first and 11 West teams with another chance to score. I like the way he plays. Plays with confidence, too. So much talent. Joey's saying the lines are slow, guys, and the Washington Foundation is ready to match 20,000. So... Well, that's Need a call to, to action, folks. Get Take off, a look at your screens. Get off, the, off that couch and call. <laughs> Guys, I mean, we'll, we'll talk more at halftime. You heard in the pregame, but, boy, the work that the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane does is, is so important. Last year, they, they serviced over 17,000 patients, over 1,000 surgeries. There's Wilson squirting for it again. And that's all, all paid for free for the patients how incredible is that not great just absolutely great and the stories here we now you see the west going no huddle this has been the been the Jarrett wilson show from the from the beginning of this series the polson pirate looking through and there he is gets forward there is a flag, flag in the flag backfield the is that going to be holding uh, i wonder that's if it is that's another touchdown removing penalty Wait on the signal. But what an effort from Jared Wilson. Yeah, look at those numbers on the bottom of your screen, folks. one 7 shrine or visit mtshrinegame.org. Plenty of ways to donate. Everything. Everything helps. Doesn't matter how small, how big. But right now, the Dennis and Phyllis Washington Women Foundation will match up to $20,000. So let's get there, folks. We're, we're hoping to get at... So each team right now with five penalties each. So it's been sort of a sloppy affair. A lot of laundry on the field tonight. Un untimely penalties untimely for the West. Untimely penalties. For, yeah, absolutely. They had Duchesne almost in for a touchdown. That called back. Oh. Wilson almost in for a touchdown. That called back. Yeah, the last time I, last time Mr. Sider sent me something was at 11,085. All right, we're so, moving up. Here we go. We're in Butte. Butte America, as we said, a mile high, a mile deep, everything on the level. Tom Carter in space makes one man miss, working his way through the defense. Finally brought down at the 10 yard line, picks up six. Asher Fettis with the stop. Out of Belgrade. Impressed with the West kicking it. You no, know, Shot's done a nice job. Absolutely. Yeah, pinning them deep. Official timeout. Something's wrong. Oh, a player like down. Third and eight. And we got another player down at the moment in the end zone. Oh, no. That's Bryce Greeby. Uh, he's injured in the end zone right now. That's a huge loss. If he's not able to get up, he's shaking around. But we're going to take a quick break and, and hope uh, for some good news for you at the other side here we'll be right back in naranchi stadium for the montana east west shrine game and bryce greeby making it to the sideline we we believe it's either a cramp or maybe got the wind knocked out of him one of those things happened but uh, we, we sure hope to see him back in this football game yeah they want him on the field that's for sure yeah the speed he's shown and the touchdowns he's saved so far probably the defensive mvp for the East team, keeping this game from, from getting out of hand, but again, still just a one-point game. Both teams spit, spits and starts, sputtering and starting. <laughs> just, uh, it's been a wild game. Can't yeah. even get out of their own way sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the West team, it's third and nine. Wilson going to the back of the end zone, but there will be a flag. That's going to be pass interference on Travis Hadley. He went to the big guy. Evan Sherry. <laughs> Out of Gallatin wasn't going to let him catch that for loving her money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these guys are they're, they're good and they play with a lot of confidence and 
And it just that's the way it is. You know, you, when you're coaching secondary guys, you, it, you'd rather take a penalty than give up the touchdown. And so that's what he's, he just made that decision himself. So that'll give the West team just a short field before the painted grass, painted turf. Two minutes left. All right, Nash has got a quick injury update for us on, on Mr. Greeby. Well, Ashley, what, what, what's going I, on down there? I know you guys were hoping that maybe it was just him getting the wind knocked out of him. Unfortunately, it does look like it is a left ankle injury. Um, he's kind of grimacing in pain a little bit, so they're working on it right now, but unfortunately, it wasn't getting the wind knocked out of him. I'll let you guys know if I hear anything else, but they're working on him on the sideline. Adam Jones in for a touchdown, and that puts the West on top again. 14-7, pending an extra point. Yeah, and just Thanks, uh, again, that, that, update. that patience, right? Just just in and out, in and out, and in and out, and finally they got the formation and the adjustment that they wanted, and and there it is, six. You know, the, 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 the thing about an offense like that, too, is it gets better as the game goes by, and the physicality of it gets at you, too, and then pretty soon it's just like a heavyweight fight where it's just a body shot after body shot. And that's what I would be concerned with if I'm from the East right now, because it's they're starting to get more and more success running the ball inside. And that means the big boys up front are getting the push that they need. For sure. Adam Jones and, and Tom Carter, uh, inarguably the two best running backs in the state on the same team. What a one two punch. And uh, Adam Jones himself, 49 rush yards on that touchdown. And as a team, West, with over 100 yards rushing so far, that's been their bread and butter. You know, between the two quarterbacks, Deshane and Wilson, Wilson's has really moved the team. Um, you know, what, what touchdown call back on a penalty, and um, so he's 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 got he's got the West going, that's for sure. Yeah, it seems like he's made something happen every time he's touched the ball. Whether it's you know the pocket collapses, he's scrambling for a couple yards, or he's making the right decision. Mm -hmm. You can see the game slows for him. He can, he's patient, he looks for things, and he's confident. Tough. In the running for offensive MVP so far. It's going to be an interesting race to see who takes home those honors at the end of this ball game. Still plenty of football to go. Under two minutes left in the Montana East-West Shrine game. The West on top, 15-7. to Kick into the East team. Let's see how. The folks from east of the Continental Divide respond. And another trickeration here. It's Cade Boyd, though, on the left side. And he evades the tackler. He's got some running room. And he's going to go up the sideline, but steps out of bounds right at the 36. He had nothing but green turf yeah. in front of him. Oh, and we got a little, little hanky back there. OK, I oh, do see man. that. Might have been a block in the back in that area. He did seem to uh, have gotten loose. Uh, wait for the signal the referees have called a great game so far during the return holding receiving team 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul first down Feels like several times tonight, Greg. Yeah, the it's East been. team has, has gotten what looks like a, a huge game changing play and then just shoot themselves in the foot. Yeah. He had some speed, didn't he? <laughs> on that outside first and 10 on the 15 yard line after the penalty Jake Casagranda back in a quarterback for the East team out of Bozeman it's got Rafe Long in it on the screen pass but he is met immediately by who else Talon Marsh yeah what a Talon Marsh in a, in his own blitz concept he drops actually just settled and looked for that and um, hello Absolutely buries Rafe Long. It's interesting when you watch some players that just have an instinct. They're just around the ball. It just they feel the game. It just comes to them, and he just zone dropped and just held himself there and just waited, and then came up and smucked him. Predator naturally knew it was coming. It seemed like and lays the hurt. Second and nine for the East team. They hand off to Long in this time, and he works his way up. One of the fastest guys in the state breaks through the second level. Finally brought down after a gain of six. Nice run for Rafe Long and had a great false high. Yeah, especially out of a second effort, too. 
I talked to his coach earlier this week, and he said he's the fastest three, third, but three steps. He's the fastest athlete he's ever seen. Yeah, I'm out of Great Falls, and I had a chance to watch Rafe Long and a lot. He returned three kickoffs for touchdowns, or three kicks, punts, and kickoffs. And, uh, you know, always a threat to break loose at any point. Very, very fast. Got a brother who plays for the University of Montana, Gabe Longen. A lot of talent in that family. There's Boyd getting the football, another future University of Montana commit. Couldn't tell where he... It's close, awfully close get the first for a down? first down, waiting for the signal. The problem looks is there's like only 12 they, seconds left in the half. Looks like they're giving it to him. All right, 12 seconds left, first down for the East yeah, team. Going to have to take a shot. First and 10 on the 26 East team. Trying to get something going before halftime. We've got an action-packed halftime show coming up for you. Carter and Ashley will be talking Shriners Children's Hospital fundraising efforts. We'll meet the patient ambassador. We're going to take a timeout. East team. 12 seconds timeout. left before halftime. Their second timeout. Again, Check. folks, that website on the bottom of your screen, mtshrinegame.org. 18337 shrine please folks we need to get to that 20,000 once we get once we get to to 20,000 then the Washington Foundation will match that and we're, lines were a little slow but my boy Joey it's not Joe Cider it's Joey Joey Cider Joey right. Cider he said the, the lines are ringing so thank you everybody for what you're doing and um, what a great opportunity to help some unfortunate kids I want to take a look at some of the Shriners on your screen and, and just thank them for everything they do. If you see one, I mean, it's just incredible the work they do at the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane. We'll hear a lot about it at halftime uh, from our, our patient ambassador and, and a few of the other testimonials from other Shrine patients in Montana. Uh, Life-changing stuff. I mean, you know, these folks. Well, can you can imagine if, if you didn't have the means and you, and you needed it and you're working on a child's life and trying to improve that and give them a quality of life and yeah it's just it's it's one of the things we do well gage norse lean at a quarterback for the east team he takes the handoff runs to his left he's got a blocker but he's chased down what a defensive play from cameron shaw that's like a couple times we said his name tonight he closes quickly yeah, Nick Michelotti, too, coming from his safety position, did a great job. So, you know, only 15-7, and West has controlled this whole game, except just a little bit of toughness out of the East, right? couple interceptions, and uh, Metrion making Belt Huskies proud and did a great, great job of reading that play and get setting it up a touchdown. All right, we're going to be right back. It's halftime at the Montana East-West Shrine game. The West team on top, 15-7 to on the Town Pump scoreboard. We'll be right back on the other side of this break. Welcome to the MTN Sports Halftime Report. Sponsored by Montana Tech Athletics. Winner of the 2023 Bandy Award as the top athletics program in the Frontier Conference. The Ore Diggers would like to send a good luck to all members of this year's Shrine Game and give a special Montana Tech welcome to the 24 Shrine players joining the Ore Digger football team this fall. Welcome to our halftime report sponsored by Montana Tech, where the West lead the East 15 to 7 in what's been a defensive slugfest so far. This has been some of the best talent, but again, tonight is bigger than football. Last year, we raised over $200,000 for Shriners Children. We need to do more this year. So let's Amen. look into some of the testimonials about the amazing work that Shriners Children does in Spokane. <laughs> So we first started to suspect that Gavin had a disease when he was about 15 months old. Um, he wasn't hitting the milestones that a typical 15 month old would hit. Um, it wasn't until about 22 months old that Gavin received the diagnosis of spinal muscular atrophy. I am Grant and I'm from Great Falls, Montana. I've got bilateral club feet. It means that my legs were turned in when I was born. So when I was a little, I got surgery on my heels. 
I am Addison Benson. Um, I am eight years old, and when my accident happened, I was two years old, and I was ran over by a lawnmower. My name is Macy Brandon, and I am from Haver, Montana. My injury was that I broke my arm. It wasn't straight, and it didn't heal. My name's Amalia Ostwell, and I'm from Haver, Montana. I had scoliosis, and I was put into a torso brace, and that was supposed to correct my scoliosis. I'm Madison, and I am from Great Falls, Montana. I was born with a club palate. I go for the Shriners Hospital for treatment. My father-in-law is a Shriner, and um, when we were moving out here, he was like, you know, you guys should reach out to Shriners and see what they could do for him. So I reached out to Shriners in Spokane. So when we first got to Shriners, we it was very welcoming. They were awesome with the kids. The care was just phenomenal. Shriners has lots of play places and lots of toys that you can play with. So Gavin's prognosis is good. Um, he'll never be cured of his disease, but with all the physical therapy and occupational therapy, he's setting himself up to be the best he can be. I mean, he'll always have some struggles in life, but it's, he'll always, he'll be just fine. Probably three or four hip surgeries. Um, seems like it was three surgery surgeries and multiple casts. We're taking Maisie to Shriners about every six months. Uh, sometimes it's a little more than that. Um, just with adjustments for her prosthetic and if she has some issues. It was very welcoming when I first went there. I was really scared, but they helped me realize that I was gonna be okay. When I went to the Shrine Hospital, um, I didn't really know what was going on. I know my family was scared and um, I'm just lucky I'm still alive. As far as her care during surgery, um, her prosthetics that she wears over and above what my insurance pays. They work with a local prosthetist here so we don't have to travel out of city or state for that matter for that because she's got a lot of adjustments that need to be done. They, they just know how to, how to treat uh, the kids and um, the parents as well. I mean it was absolutely a wonderful experience uh, in a difficult time. And the local Shrine group helping us with Travel expenses and lodging has just been a lifesaver. There have been times we've made three trips in a month out to Spokane to go to treatments. My favorite place is the playroom where all the balls and toys are. I love all the people at Shriners Hospital. They're just so nice and generous and do so much for everybody. I can do every sport, skiing, basketball, softball, wrestling with older sister. I can do a lot of sports, like nothing can stand in my way. I think that Shriners is a really good hospital for kids and that will help people become a kid again instead of worrying about, oh, I can't do this or oh, I can't do that. I am thankful for Shriners because they help kids like me and they made it so I can do everything I can do today. Uh, my prognosis is really good since after my surgery I've had, I've been able to play all the sports and been able to do stuff I really love to do. Sorry, it's not easy for me. It's easy for me to say thank you, but it's, it's super tough. Um, the folks at the Shriners have, and, and the whole organization has just been wonderful for wanting to step in and help my daughter and my family. And they're nothing but just a blessing. And we're so happy to have known them and Happy to, if, if we can help a little bit in any way, we're happy to do so. A great reminder of what this game is all about. We'll actually talk to this year's patient ambassador, Gavin Devers, when we come up after the break.
Welcome back to Naranchi Stadium for our halftime report sponsored by Montana Tech. And we are here with the star of the show, our patient ambassador, Gavin Devers. Gavin and his mom. Kendra, can we just talk about what your Shriners journey has been and how important it is that we're doing this tonight? Oh, this is huge. So this is, we'll go um, this July for our fourth year in a row. And this Shriners has just been amazing to help Gavin get this far in life. So. Can you give us a little bit of his backstory of what they've done for you guys? He does, they do braces for him. They've done gait analysis. Um, and then they've helped facilitate his neurologist here um, in Helena. So. Well, Gavin, we got to talk about this jersey. I know you are like the biggest West fan this week. What is your favorite thing about the West team? Uh, they they have beat the East. Right now, it, the score is 15 to 7. 15. 15. The score is 15 to 7, and go West. There we go. One last question for you. We've seen a couple touchdowns tonight. I still think that you've had the coolest touchdown, though. You had that 30-yard 30 tu 30 touchdown to close out the West practice earlier this week. Talk to me about what like that was. Done. What was your favorite thing? I mean, you kind of bullied them around, right? Can I get one more go West? Go West. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Gavin. We've got one more interview coming up after the break. Make sure you stick with us. Montana. I'm down here on the field with the Imperial Potentate for the Shriners, Kenny Craven. Kenny, can you tell me a little bit about what that role means? Yeah, it, being the Imperial Potentate basically means I'm the chairman of the board of directors for Shriners Hospital for Children and Shriners International. Very cool, very cool. How long have you been in the West Division? Uh, just served as chairman of the board for one year, but you served 10 years on the board. Very cool, very cool. Can you tell me a little bit about the work that you do in that role and kind of what it means to you to be a part of such an incredible organization? Yeah, you know, serving as chairman of board of directors, we oversee the whole hospital system, which is 22 hospitals around the country, in the world, in two different countries. And for, actually, for somebody like right here in Montana, it's Spokane Hospital that's here that we represent. Awesome, I love to hear it. And the final question I got for you, what's your favorite part about the work here that you do in these Shriner games? Well, you know, we just love, you know, football games. We have 32 of these high school football games around the country, and it, it gives us an opportunity to tell our story about Shriners Hospital and give brand some awareness, but more importantly, is to showcase these all-star kids that are trying to, you know, make their benefit to a college all-star game, uh, the same as the high school all-star game. They want to get to the next level. Awesome. I love hearing it. I think that should just about do it for us, and we'll head to break. Welcome back to the 76th Montana East-West Shrine Game from MTN Sports. We're back in Naranji Stadium for the 76th Montana East-West Shrine Game. The West team up 15-7. Close game on the scoreboard. The stats tell a much different story in this ballgame. We're going to get a look at those stats after the opening kickoff to the second half. West team kicking it off to the East team. Cade Boyd, they've been doing this all day, this kind of handoff, this trickeration. That's Rafe Long, and on the other end of that, gets to the 20-yard line, and that's where the East will start the second half. Now we're going to take a look at those first-half stats here, and they are one-sided despite this close score. How about that? 100 rushing yards for the West team, 191 total yards. The East team managing just 29 yards, yet they're only down by eight points. There's the difference right there. Two turnovers for the West team. That has kept the East team in this ballgame. And there's probably another 40 yards um, taken away by penalty by the West. Absolutely. You saw the penalty match up there as well. Okay, we're taking a look at the opening possession for the East. In the second half, low snap. Casagrande gets it. It's a double pass, and they find Ooh. K. Boyd. He's wide open. Can he make a man miss? He's brought down at the 45-yard line. What a way to open the second half of yeah, the East team. Just what they needed. I like it. Let's see if it puts a little life into him. For the first time, it seems, all game, no penalty wiping this one away. Right. A huge play for the East and gets him into a decent field position. And well executed. Well executed, yeah. West did not see that one coming. It's about a 40-yard ball. Cole exactly. Taylor must have, must have played quarterback somewhere. Maybe Russell. <laughs> it's that two-quarterback system, kind of like what you see at, at Montana State with uh, Boy, that's Tommy Mallott. Yeah, that's a vicious offensive scheme. 
There's Cade Boyd again working his way through the defense, but he is met in the backfield, bounces ahead for a couple of yards, pick up a three, tough running for Cade Boyd out of Billings Central. I think we'll see a, a, a better half of football um, now just because people are adjusted in and coaches know what they need to do and they're going to settle in and do what they do best. Uh, update from my buddy Joey Sider. Let's see. We are up to 15,544. We're doing well. All right, doing we well. Got to get it to 20,000, and the Washington Foundation will match that. And uh, that 33,000 last night. So we're, so we're sitting at about 50,000. And uh, Ashley Washburn told us earlier that should we get to 100,000, she would hit the gritty on the sideline. Ashley's going to tell us uh, a little bit about <laughs> that plan. I don't know what the gritty is. Ashley, could you explain what, what, the, what the gritty is to us? Maybe just show us two gritty moves just so we know what we need to look forward to. Yeah, I don't know if you guys really want <laughs> me to gritty much, or not. Oh, wait, just kidding. We're doing it. Can you see it? Nah, just kidding. One of those um, if you guys get up to $125,000, though, these days, the I won't dance. Yeah, so if we get to 100000 we're going to put Ashley on camera. She's going to hit the gritty, whatever that means, some kind of dance move the kids are doing these days. Could be a big deal. Could be a big deal, but that's your incentive. Another two quarterback situation. Casa Granda hands off to Gage Norslein. You know where they're attacking. They're attacking way outside with success. This is a great, great opening drive for, for the East. That's most yards they've gotten so far. Nine yards on the pickup as of halftime. Well, the West team, as we mentioned, leading the rushing attack. Pat Duchesne with 53 passing yards. Adam Jones, 49 rushing yards. Wilson with uh, 34 rushing yards, 38 passing yards. Cam Gerdsey has 53 through the air. But the East putting something together here again, only down by eight. So despite the spits and starts in this game and kind of the, the weird flow to it, it's still a good ball game. A lot of misdirection there. Jake Casagranda, he works his way up for a first down, picks up about 12 yards, and the East just moving the ball yeah. three straight. Nice adjustments. I mean, getting everything on the outside. They're sealing the inside. The rule is if you can run out, you got to seal in. Doing a nice job. Derek Lear and his coaching staff throwing some wrinkles into this East offense, working so far here in the third quarter. 12.45 left. A couple minutes gone, and they got all three quarterbacks in at the moment. Jake Casagranda under center. Cole Taylor and Gage Norsling split wide, along with Luke Smith. All these guys are talented. Casagranda pulls it down, takes it himself. Nothing doing. Case Cruz, the DT out of Manhattan, wasn't having any of that. Okay, Screws plans to walk on the Montana State Bobcats. A number of Bobcat commits in this football game across both sides. There's 13 of them. Loss of two, so it's second and 12 for the East team. Now they're in a the second long, and this is where they don't want to be. This does not match up for them. And so that gave him fits the first half, all the pressure from the front. So let's we'll see what they do. Coach Lear wants to talk about it. He takes the timeout. We will as well. 15-7, the West team on top of the East team at 11.53 remaining in the third quarter. We'll be right back with more for the Montana East-West Shrine game. West team leading 15-7 in the third quarter, second and long. And, and like you said, Greg, this is not exactly where the West East wants to be after uh, starting the, the half so strong. This plays into the West defense. Norsley pulls it down, gets his block. He finds a man. It's Luke Smith. Oh, has some separation. There is a flag thrown. That could go either way. Yeah, I think that's going to go estimation. offensive. It might be appearance. offensive. Yeah, Luke Smith, the tight end out of Bozeman. A little bit of a push off. And that one's coming back. Grace Greeby going off again. He's got an ankle or something. Yeah, Greeby gave it a go. He was stretching out during halftime, running some, some lines and doing the karaoke. No but he is limping off the field yet again. That Oh, I thought it was offensive pass interference. I saw the shove it from the back. Okay, so they took away the flag. They wiped it away. So that'll bring up third and 12 now for the third East team. Third and 12. 
Now let's find, let's watch Marsh, number 52. This is where he has made a living. They moved him out. So now he's a little wider than the three technique. He's uh, now he's coming down ball. under the center. Always got to watch where that guy lines up on the football field because he can do some damage. Gage Nors lean under center, takes the snap. Snap, ball never got snapped. So that's going to be You saw the, that was caused by Marsh actually because the center was calling for him and the guard. Did you see that? I did. Well, they, they called for the double and then he forgot to snap it. So, yeah, he does cause problems. Even when there's no play, he's making an impact. <laughs> it was. That's exactly what happened. The center was calling and saying, I'm taking him, and I'm sure they called for a double off the center and guard. I feel like you got to credit him for a tackle for loss or something right. on that play, even though the ball was never snapped. Now see where he's at. Well, he's a that. defensive end on the other side. As you said, Mahalo's just moving him all over the place. DN, yep. D tackle. Put him to the boundary. Excellent football player. He's playing defensive end now. He was nose guard before. In fact, he's outside. Norsling drops back, feeling a little pressure. Breaks loose, though. Perns on the Jets. Trying to find some running room. He gets some blocking, and he scoots ahead. Nice pickup, but just back to about the original line of scrimmage, and it brings up fourth and ten for the East team. Fourth, fourth and, and ten, Ron. What? <laughs> And they don't. They lost their deep snapper. Remember, Garcia is not in the game. Now they're going for it. Straight up offense. They are, yeah. You know, you practice all oh, week with, and with one guy. And they'll get five more. And they get five more. Okay, drawing them off sides. That was Marsh, moving. Yep. So the five yards he was responsible for earlier, they get right back. And East now with a little bit more manageable of a fourth down, hey, fourth Hunter. and three. You know, the East has had success going outside, so it's, we'll see if they do the same thing, run the bubble screen or, or get someone out, quarterback sweep. You surely can feel like we were talking at halftime. There's no rhythm, right? There's no, there's no rhythm to the game. When you call the game, it's hard to... It's hard if the teams aren't in rhythm and, and they just can't seem to find their rhythm yet. Yeah, they'll, they'll take turns having uh, some stagnant moments and then uh, some, some brilliant flashes of offense. But we'll see if the second half was a little bit cleaner. Gage Norsling with the reverse. And that's his guy, Royce Robinson. He tried to pass it, but it's going nowhere. He takes a little bit of a bump. Lewistown to Lewistown connection, and that goes nowhere. So it's a turnover on downs. West nice. team takes over. Nice heads up play by Ridgeway out of Whitefish. He just stayed home. Yeah, that's 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 a problem for the East. They had a nice drive going, and then they got in that second long, and then the world just changed for them. It just fell into the lap of West. That's what they want. They want them in a long type situation so they can tee off and go because they can't handle them. Yeah, there, there's really not a whole lot of time back there for, for anyone to, to set up an offense or run an offense before that stout defensive line and that front is, is in the backfield and causing problems for the offense. Here's they go back to Wilson to start it. He's being chased out of the pocket deep and he throws it on the run he's got a man just overthrows him outside Eli Norris would have done what the rules are when you got a scrambling quarterback you know you sometimes you just break and run because that's what what Wilson thought he was going to do and he would if he would have done that that would have been a touchdown actually <laughs> yeah but one or two steps too slow for Eli Norris can't quite get it but again what, what an athlete, I mean, even when he doesn't connect and make a, uh, a, a completion, Jared Wilson, just, uh, yeah. you know, what, what an impressive play that was yes. on the run, deep ball down the sideline. Could have resulted in six had the receiver had one more step on him. And there he goes, fakes the handoff to Carter up the middle again. He's Picks doing a much better, yards. much better job of holding things tighter. Defense is playing better. So 76 Shrine games over the years started in 1947 and Ashley has a little bit more on the history of the Shrine game and some of the all-time great classics uh, <laughs> of this game. Ashley, what do you got? 
Well, guys, I am a little bit of a history junkie, so I kind of, just kidding, I didn't actually go through the history. This is on, all on their website that you could see, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of what their longest touchdown run was. 72 yards, and it was in 1990, so it's a stat that's held up for quite some long time from Scott Spragans. He actually went to go play for UM and was a part of that 1995 national championship team. And then the longest touchdown pass, 99 yards. I don't know if we'll see that again in a while, but that was in 20... I think it was 2014 is what it was. I didn't write that one down, but Levi Lined is a Red Lodge guy. He played for Montana Tech, and then Will Wire, he played for UM and unfortunately had to reti retire pretty quickly after that from an injury. But, you know, so history junkie, those are some stats that they're trying to, to change this year. Hey, thanks, Ashley. We're still going to hold you that gritty if we get to 100,000. It wasn't a 99-yard touchdown pass, but it was a heck of a completion from Wilson to Chrisman again. That connection, Wilson under pressure. Again, escapes. He's so good at evading that contact and making something out of nothing. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I, you know, the, the East is going to have to spy him. He's he's too dangerous on the outside. And he's getting to run anywhere he wants, right? And that he creates problems that way. And so uh, they're going to have to spy him, get someone that can run and, and get with him. You can't let him keep doing what he's doing because he's just too dangerous. Second and 10. 36-yard line for the West team. Yeah, Wilson just so, so dangerous. And he's got... Plays with a lot of confidence. I guess you would if you throw 300 for 300 yards every time you play. <laughs> he's got a green light, that's for sure. And they hand it off to Tom Carter again. He's been somewhat quiet in this game for a guy who, who led the double-A in rushing. But nonetheless, his athleticism... Yeah, I think, he, I think he needs a little bit of space, and then the juice goes. But credit to the East defense for, for shutting him down when he does get in space. Because yeah. he's had plenty of screen passes, plenty of, uh, of missed tackles he's evaded. But Yeah, I, you know, hats off to the East defense. If, if they hadn't been playing as well as they have and the turnovers that they have, mm -hmm. the score would be much different. Look much that. different. And Bryce Greeby back in this, this football game, too. What a warrior limped off twice, but he is still in there and they need him on this team. Over the middle, completion. That was a combo route with a blitz and he read it. Wilson to Wilson. Arsenal. Oh, Canada. Wilson read that he, he played the curl underneath, but he had the wheel for the touchdown. He's reading it. There it is, and you see the wheel break loose on the oh, outside. Sure enough, yeah. Could have been six. Nonetheless, it is a first down for the West team. Wilson was probably that guy growing up that kid in the park, right? That everybody picked him first because <laughs> if you got if he if, he, if he's on your team, you're going to win. Yeah, That's just recess. It. He, he's the all-time quarterback. You know, give him the ball, right. and you're you're absolutely going to see some fireworks. First and ten from the 21-yard line. West looking for more. Over the middle, nice pass to Jay Stenson, tight end out of Butte. And uh, that, that pass there uh, puts Wilson over 100 yards passing on the day. No surprise there. He's been slinging it. Stenson showing his athleticism, too. That's a big guy. He's 6'3". Watch him handle the ball here. Just not pure fundamentals. Nice catch. Stenson, uh, a tight end in this game, played quarterback for Butte this year. Threw for 2,600 yards. Caught uh, also threw for 25 touchdowns. He's playing tight end. That's where he's going to play in college at Montana Tech. Just a great athlete out of Butte, and the hometown crowd loves it. Wilson under pressure, and he goes down. It's Hunter Charbonneau out of Fairview. He's had a couple big plays today at crucial times, too. You know these, uh, these small-town guys, when they get recruited, to the Bobcats. They have to have some talent because yeah. sometimes it's hard to get noticed at those six-man and eight-man schools. Yeah, you watch him come on the outside here and he just has control of himself and keeps low and you know that Wilson's tough to catch. That's Charbonneau's second sack of the day. Voted most inspirational player on the East team. And it backs up for the West team. Wilson, though, with a deep shot. His man had a step and there it wow. is. Touchdown East, it's Bryce Humphrey, the track star out of St. Ignatius Mission High School. He's going to be running track for Montana Tech, and he's got a touchdown for the West team to put them up 21-7. to Watch out, if we can get a replay on this, watch how clean this play is run. So Humphrey breaks loose just on a go route, 
and and uh, Wilson just lays it up. Perfect ball, absolutely perfect. In stride. Wow. When nice. we say there's talent on the field, there's talent on the field. This is Humphrey's second All-Star game of the summer. He played in the eight-man All-Star game, Bob Cleverly Classic, at Montana Tech just a week or two ago. What a state long jump title in Class B. 21 feet, two and a half inches, so you know he's a heck of an athlete. And he's not playing football. This is his final football game. He'll be running track for the Diggers here in Butte. And the extra point makes it 22 to 7. West team over the East team. We'll be right back at the Ranchi Stadium with the 76th annual East West Shrine game. See you on the other side. There's Bryce Humphrey there hauling in that moon ball from Jarrett Wilson. Two of the smaller guys on the field. Proving it short king season. Bryce Humphrey there is one of two players since 2002 from Mission High School to make an appearance in this Shrine Star game. Shrine All-Star game, sorry about that. And he is making his presence felt 100%, no doubt about it. Absolutely phenomenal hole in his second pass of the day there. Wanted to keep an eye on as he continues his career in athletics, not football, but tech, track, and field. And that should about wrap it up from the field down here. Back up to you guys. Hey, thanks, Carter. Hey, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Carter's hairstyle today. The, the best mullet I've seen in, in quite some time. Just the, the absolute impeccable flow. Fits right in here in Butte, America. It definitely has some wave in it, I'll tell you that. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to put this out there. If we get to $100,000, not only will Ashley do the great hey, this Carter. Hey, look way. check it out. Holy yeah. cow. Carter will... Uh, We'll make a we'll make a bust of his head and we'll give it to the highest bidder. Yep, you'll have a bust of Carter's mulleted head, or he'll shave it. One or the other, whichever you prefer. <laughs> Thanks so much, Carter. Looking great down there. Thanks to all our crew here at the Montana Television Network making this broadcast happen. And again, that number at the bottom of your screen at one eight three three seven Shrine. Yep. Well, the website, mtshrinegame.org. You got an update from Joey? Yeah, our, Mr. Sider said our phones have slowed down, Tom. They slowed down. That's not we, good, guys. We, got, we have to keep going, guys. We need to get the Washington Foundation to match. Whoop. Oh, a little miscommunication. The snap uh -oh. goes, and that's going to be a safety. Wow. Another disastrous possession for the East team. And tack on two more points for the West. They'll get the ball right back. They just weren't prepared for that snap. That came out of that's, nowhere. That's happened a couple times, a couple actually. Times. The first... First time we saw it was marsh driven or caused and I don't know if I've seen two safeties in a game in my life. Same game. Uh, not in the All-Star game. There was a Montana State game earlier this year. There was four oh, safeties yes. in one game. You I, I was, that? At, yeah, I was came, at that game. They actually. were at that game. It was Weaver State, if I recall. Uh, that was a, a <laughs> anomaly. I was also in that game up in the booth. That was a wild affair, but two safeties in a uh, Shrine game. I'm not 100% certain if that's ever happened. We have to check the record book, but nonetheless, 24-7 West on top of the East, and they've just been dominating this game. But okay, we're up to 16,734. Okay. Remember we have Joe 630 and... left in the third quarter. We need to get to 20,000 as quickly as we can, and we'll get that to 40. And then we're only 60,000 short of seeing the, what's it called? <laughs> the, the gritty. The gritty. The gritty. Yeah, yeah the Ashley gritty. will have the gritty, and Carter will uh, do something with this bullet. I may not even watch it. It might scare me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. 18337Shrine, mtshrinegame.org. If you watched our halftime show, you heard from some of the patients who have received that life-saving care from the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane. You heard from some of the administrators and the Shriners themselves about the important mission they do, and it's just absolutely vital. They can't do it without donations. They can't do it without support. And that's what this game is all about. The football sure is fun, but man, we could bump up those numbers and get those phone lines ringing for Joey Sider and crew. That'd be fantastic as Adam Ooh. Jones. And 15. Across. And 15. Oh, and you see the frustration. Yep. Little shove, shove, little east west shove there. Giving each other the business. See that? So Adam Jones brings it across the 50 yard line to about the 15, but add some on top of that, and the West is going to get another shot. Yeah, this is not calling your own fouls. Like I said, this I've watched these games, and and you know in Montana we just play, we know how to play the game, and whether whether it's for the Shrine game or the state championship, you better have, you better be strapped up. 
these guys are all competitors. You they know, they are want competitors. to win <laughs> on that that east sideline and the west sideline. You know, they, they don't want to lose. They won't be in a situation <laughs> like this. But a little frustration on the east, 24-7. <laughs> I, I would imagine so. Yeah. That'll be plus 15. Could even be an ejection. See what they call here. There's a, a conference of officials. Yeah, I think that's what they're deciding whether. It's pretty egregious. There you see A.J. LaFerge coming in there with a late hit out of bounds on Adam Jones. That's when the extracurricular started. So they're, they're talking about what to do in this situation. It's certainly going to be a penalty on the East team. But there was so much uh, pushing and shoving on the outside. You never know what, what, what the outcome of this is going to be. Certainly not what you want to see from your players if you're a coach, but there's fire on both sides. There's no doubt about that. Sorted out here. All-star crew of officials, too. I think it's been a well-officiated game. Oh, it's been very well. You know, they're, it's, it's in fairness to both teams, you know, five days of practice, you're practicing three times a day, your legs aren't even really under you when you come to play, mm -hmm. you know, and that's one of the things that's concerning is, you know, it, it you know, it takes at least it takes a while to get into shape and these guys keep themselves in good shape, but you get a little bit leg weary and yeah, outside of the class B and six man and eight man all star games. Most of these players haven't played a down of football since November last yeah. fall. And here it is June of, of 2023 and they're uh, you know, a lot of months off. They, they do their best they can in, in the time they have. Three practices a day for, for a number of days. You can do a lot, but it's still, you know, getting the flow of the game and, and getting into the groove on the football field is difficult. I think there were three. I think he, I think if I read that right, I think there were three personal fouls on either side, Those offsetting penalties, and then one the that went for against East. I don't know. There was a lot of arm movement there. I don't see any ejection, so I think it's just. I can't imagine if you get kicked out of this game, you don't get to play in another. You can't play another All-Star game. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I bet you can't even. If someone asks you to play in the park, you got to sit that one out too. <laughs> yeah, those, those Thanksgiving games coming up in. Yeah, in you'd November. have to sit out yeah, the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving game. Thanksgiving game in your family in your yeah. backyard. Yeah, you got. You can't play. Yeah, at least a quarter. Right. Or two, but uh, the net result of all that Unless is. Unless you're on mom's team. And then if you're on mom's team, then she might trump everything and just say, Yeah, you're you, you get to play. Uh, <laughs> I'm, let, I'm letting him play. Because mom's, mom's rules, will, that's it. So after the turn and the barrage of penalties, it's West ball first and 10 on the 35 yard line. Patrick Duchesne back in the ball game, a quarterback hands it off to Adam Jones, who Adam delivered Jones. that return, and he scoots ahead on the sweep for seven yards, bring up second and three. He just runs effortlessly. Jones was at about, at about 50 yards rushing at halftime, so got to believe he's approaching the 100-yard mark. He's packed the mail for him tonight, that's for sure. Carter got a lot of touches early, not many lately, but Jones is... Jones is packing the mail, as they say, Tom. Jones been the feature back, packing the mail, pounding the rock. He's going to be studying chemical engineering at Montana State. And Duchesne brought down the backfield. By Tyler Shane Tyler out of Shane. Chinook. Yep. He's had a couple big hits in the backfield, has the Chinook Sugar Beater product. Chinook Sugar Beater. Easily the best mascot in Montana. Would you agree? How could it not be? It's up there. Right. <laughs> I love Montana. Tyler Shane, a two-time state wrestling champion himself. He signed with Montana Western. Planning to major in business administration, farm and ranch operations. Be his focus in school. Those Highline boys just built a little bit different. All right, here's Duchesne rolling to his right. Fires a dart. Oh, to Eli, Eli, Taylor. Eli Taylor. Out of Hamilton. Man, boy, that was a dart. Boy, he set his feet, and that ball was gone. First time, I believe, we've seen Eli Taylor, but he led Class A 
in receiving. 814 yards, 10 receiving touchdowns on the year out of Hamilton. 5'9", 150 pounds. Great catch, too. He was in decent coverage over the top of him. Strong hands. Undecided on his future, but clearly a talented wide receiver. First and 10 of the 17-yard line. Duchesne calling his own number. Works ahead, not much doing. Maybe picks up one or two on the play. Looks like the ball popped loose. What are they going to call it? East thinks they have it. The third West turnover. is going to say he's down, though. So West retains the ball. Asher Fed is not happy from Belgrade High. He, he must have been he the one that, that stripped him. I don't know if we got a replay and we can see this or TV crew's been great. Guys in the truck, thank you. Yeah, all star crew. It is an all star crew. Wow. I want to thank the folks behind the scenes James Rafferty, Greg Heinzman, Drew Shiner out in Kansas City. Running the boards. It's been a lot of fun working with these guys this week, getting ready for this broadcast. My buddy Joe Sider, 18,245. We're getting there. Come Ancient on, guys. So closer, guys. We're less than 2,000 away from hitting that $20,000 mark. And then the Dennis and Phyllis Washington Foundation is going to match that. And that'll put us a long way towards that $100,000 mark. We're looking for to get Ashley to gritty, get Carter to shave that mullet. What else? You tell us. You text us. You text Joey. You, you call up that number. Let right. us know what you'd like to, to do or what we want to say. 1 Shrine. 1 8337 Shrine. Gets us closer to where we need to be. We are not above giving shout outs. If anyone's got a birthday or anything, just call that number. Donate a little money. Anything helps, folks. It can Tom's, be little, it can be a lot. Tom's mom even called in, <laughs> donated. Thanks, Tom's mom. Appreciate you, mom. Appreciate that. All right, timeout. West team, they're going to talk about this. 3.37 left in the third quarter. We're going to take a quick commercial break. The West team leading 24-7 in the 76th annual Montana East-West Shrine game. We'll be right back at the Ranchi Stadium after the break. And we're back at the Ranchi Stadium with the West. Second and one from the eight-yard line, looking to add to their 24-7 lead in the 76th annual Montana East-West Shrine game. First time we've seen West in the I formation. Now power package there for West. They handed it to Tom ISO. Carter. Little hesitation, but he's going to be brought down. That's Tyler Shane yet again. He's had a heck of a day for that East off defense. He really has. He's been a he's been a gamer for him. Shane went 41 and 0 on the wrestling match as a senior, undefeated. 41 and 0. 41 and 0. Two-time state champion. Did you ever wrestle? No. <laughs> it's I like my ears too much. We it, talked about yeah, that earlier. Yeah, yeah, with bad ears, but it's as close to death, I think, as yeah. it it taps into the lowest percentages of your body left. I have so much respect toughness. for for wrestlers oh. and, and what they do because it's 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 just you out there. You know, there's there's no one you can rely on. It's. It's pass or fail, win or lose, and it's all on you. The snap is bobbled by Duchesne. He picks it up, though, and he fires a bullet to the back of the end zone, and that's a touchdown. The second one of the day to Bryce Humphrey out of Mission, the future track star at Montana Tech, puts the West team up by a lot, 30 to 7 at this point, with 2.45 remaining in the third quarter. Good awareness by Duchesne, right? And Humphrey is uh, showing his skills. For sure. That was Eli Taylor, rather, number 12. My apologies. Taylor hauling it in. Right. That's his second nice catch, catch of the day, and it goes for a touchdown. Duchesne does a nice job of just picking the ball up, right? Finding a receiver. Good. It's just one of those things, making something out of nothing. Could have been a disaster. The ball's on the ground. East couldn't get to it. And Duchesne picks it up and finds his man wide open in the middle of the end zone. Flag on the kick, so hold the extra point. Yeah, illegal procedure, I think. Ah. Delay a game. Offsides. Whatever else we could throw in the pot of beans. <laughs> it is, it's just hard in five days to try to get all this to gel. <laughs> you know, there's 11 guys on the field. Everybody has to know what they're doing, and they have to know that they're in that special team. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's tough. You, you kind of just cobble together a special teams unit from uh, the guys you have on the team with, with no chemistry, you know, sometimes little direction because, you know, they got to spend a lot of time installing the plays, right. reading the playbook, right. you know, right. oh, I guess we'll do special teams at the end of practice, right. see what we got. So legal formation or legal procedure, push the West back a bit. I don't think it'll matter there. Kicker's pretty good. Pretty automatic. <laughs> There's no ball in the field. They're waiting. Here it comes. <laughs> that uh, kicker is Dylan Root out of Jefferson, Montana. Boulder, 6'1", 185, signed with Montana Tech, and he's going to be doing exactly what he's doing right now, punting and kicking the football. He does it well. Also a track star. We talked about some of the track talent on this team as he punches it through to make it 31-7 West team. Dylan Root, Class B State 110 hurdles champion. Panthers are, uh, they three-peated this year at, at Class B track and field. The state tournament three-peat for Jefferson Panthers helped in part by Dylan Root. And he played in the Class B All-Star game about a week ago too. So it's 31-7. West up 31-7. And you know, this is a sporting event going on here in Butte, but it's not the only sporting event involving some Montana teams happening in the country right now. Ashley Washburn has an update on the CNFR. Yeah, I just want to give you guys a little update. I know that there's a lot of rodeo fans that are probably not watching CNFR right now because they're here watching our broadcast. But Paige Rasmussen, one of the best cowgirls in the country, just won the national championship for goat tying. I talked to her before she headed to CNFR. It was something that she was hoping to cap off her goat tying career just because she's actually going to put rodeo away for a bit. She's actually headed to the East Coast for an internship. Uh, she's trying to get into the medical field, so she's stepping away from rodeo. But what a better way to cap it off than by winning a national championship. She was in third place heading into tonight, but won the short go with a time of six seconds. So congrats to her. Pretty amazing feat. I know Flint Rasmussen is celebrating somewhere right now. <laughs> yeah, actually, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's her second ever national championship. At least she won with a team before, correct? She won with the team. She was the all-around champion two years ago, but this is her first official goat tying championship. Last goat, goat tying championship was 2011, so it's been a bit of time. So. Lots of reason to celebrate, that's for sure. Incredible. Thanks, Ashley. Again, yeah, Paige Rasmussen, the daughter of a world-famous pony man, Flint Rasmussen. Bunch of Shoto, Montana, cowboy, cowgirl family. Pretty cool. He, Pretty cool. He is funny. Have you watched him? <laughs> I, I mean, have. have you been to a rodeo where you know, he's, I, oh, I, I saw gosh. him for the first time a couple weeks back in Great Falls. You know, he did his retirement in the PBR, but he's doing a bunch of smaller rodeos now. He was there for the Dusty Gleeco bull riding challenge, and boy, he had the crowd eaten out of the palm of his hand. That guy is a talented, funny, funny human. He is. He really is. Two, two daughters, Paige and Shelby Rasmussen, rodeo stars, lots to be proud of. How about this, Mr. Sider, Joey Sider? We are up to 22,304 with a quarter to go. Boom! So we got it. We thank you, Washington Foundation, matching the 20,000. Ashley, you may want to get stretched out a little bit <laughs> if that's what it requires. We're working hard. I, I, I mean, if we get to that level, if we get to 100,000, heck, I'll, I'll, I'll do the grid. I don't even know what it is. Please, please don't. Uh, <laughs> could, could you do it, Ashley? Have you ever done a backflip? <laughs> Sounds good, Ashley. You know, uh, the, the East team had a lot of fun this week, not just at practice, but uh, I, I saw some video of them actually going to the pool after one of their practices, and they had a belly flop competition. A lot of them ended up with red sides, red tummies. There's <laughs> some big guys belly flopping too, right? <laughs> Would have been fun to see. But yeah, just a, a fun week. You know, a lot of team building, a lot of chemistry building opportunities. We mentioned the ammo box for the East team. West team did a lot of uh, speakers come to their practice and, and, and you know, give some insight and, and motivation as well. Bob Green stopped by. Everyone knows Bob Green and his Bob Greenisms. What's your favorite Bob Greenism? Have you heard any before? <laughs> 
Okay, the CMR Moms threw a challenge out there. Ooh. $50. All right, CMR Moms. CMR Moms. Throwing in $50 to the pot. Can you match it, please? Russell Moms, 50 bucks. Go Rustlers. Russell Hustle. All right, mtshrinegame.org. 18337 Shrine is the East team. Rafe Long and hauling that pass in. That was behind him, but that was a good hand to bring it in. And had he not caught that, that would have been a football. That would have been a, I said football, that would have been a fumble. <laughs> yeah, that was behind the line of scrimmage, behind the quarterback. Rafe Long and averaged 89 yards rushing per game. Dealt with a little bit of injuries. That's a this great season. catch. But he is a talented, talented dude. You know what it's like to be yards. that fast. I, I don't think I'm even that fast in a vet, probably. So uh, on on Wednesday during Shrine practice, the seven o'clock, uh, a bunch of fellow employees of mine, we went out to the field and we we did a four by one hundred meter relay race, and the East team put together a a, uh, a team as well. So we were racing against four so members you as of the a East staff. team. Yes. <laughs> And uh, Rafe Long was on that team, as well as A.J. LaFerge, Kate Boyd. And you were running against these guys. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Somehow, some way. And they let you run they let us. with us. But here's the deal, is that they, we handicapped them. They had to do 10 push-ups before they could start, and they still beat us. <laughs> They're so fast. You may not want to say that out loud. <laughs> we did it. We have video of it. It's, uh, it's quite embarrassing. <laughs> I ran a leg. I ran the third leg. Got passed quickly. <laughs> but you ran the leg. These guys. I did it. I made it. I didn't pull anything. Oh, Soles of my feet hurt a little bit, but, you know, yeah. I'm getting up there. Well, 100 meters, that's a long ways. <laughs> you lose a shoe, you can lose a back. You could blow a hammy. All kinds of stuff. But that was fun. But it just kind of goes to show just how talented and athletic and, and fast <laughs> these guys are. You know, they hit 10 yeah. push-ups. Rafe Long had started it. Knocked him out. And then they cruise to a victory in, in the KRTV MTN 4x100 meter relay celebrity challenge race, I guess you call ever, it. Have you ever thought about taking on an, another network, your competitor network? Could you? <laughs> Some anchorman style stuff? Yeah. Right. We'll see how it goes. All right. Cole Taylor in a quarterback, pulls it in, rushes for a gain of four. Yeah, Still. guess who was coming in? 52. Force that outside. Talon Marsh yet again, Montana Gatorade Player of the Year, just disrupting that East offense. Now, uh, we, we had some stats earlier. Last we checked, the West team over 300 yards of total offense. East team yet to crack 100. They were 93 yards of total offense. They may have gotten there now, but just the disparity in, in uh, production on the offensive side is, is the difference in this ballgame. And that'll bring us to the end of the third quarter. The West team up 31 to 7. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back in the Ranchi Stadium in Butte for the 76th Montana East West Shrine game. We'll see you on the other side. Welcome back into Narachi Stadium. I just wanted to talk about Cole Taylor really quick because he led that drive for the East team, but that's actually not the side of the ball that you're going to see him on when he suits up for Montana State in the fall. They actually kind of have him recruited as a linebacker. Uh, Bobby Daly had said, you know, during that recruiting process is that he caught their eye during a camp last season, but he kind of joked around saying that they know a thing or two about creating dominant line. I actually almost just got tackled right there, guys. I don't know if you saw that. They know a thing or two about creating dominant linebackers, specifically Troy Anderson, of course and they see that in him. So, you know, something to keep an eye on. We might see another great talent back there coming soon. So much, Ashley. Yeah, Cole Taylor uh, was quarterback for the CMR wrestlers this year. Uh, during one game, Glacier High School, he threw for over 400 yards. Now, that's a school record at CMR. And I don't think I need to tell you what kind of quarterback talent CMR's had over the years. We're talking Dave Dickinson, Ryan Leaf. Now, Cole Taylor has an all-time record for the wrestlers with 401 yards passing in one game his senior season. He's under pressure, gets it to Rafe Longin, can't haul it in. And again, it's Talon Marsh in the backfield. All right, what do we got, Greg? Well, I'm just trying to read this from my friend Joe. Um, we had a, a we're, we're up to 23,675. We just had a thousand dollar donation. All right. Um, I'll have to reread how these are doing, but I think we have two girls that are 10 years old that have given $11. Hey, that's awesome. How about that? That's so cool. <laughs> 
See, it doesn't take much. Anything helps. How cool is that? Two 11-year-old really, girls. That is really cool. Last year from Maxi, $11. We got names for them? We got to give them a shout out. Uh, they don't have no names yet, but they're 10 gotcha. years old. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. If you're watching at home, your 11-year-old girls who called up the 10 year old girls and gave $11 each, you know, up to your piggy bank. I mean, it's it's such a good cause and you can make such a difference. And that, that's so sweet. That, that warms my heart. You yeah, know, open your that heart. is really that is really cool. <laughs> I love that. Yes, I love that. really, really cool. So if 10 year old girls can call in and donate. So can you folks. one 837 shrine raising money for the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane, Washington. Last year they serviced and provided care for over 17,000 patients, a thousand surgeries, all free of charge for the patients and their families when they visit that Shriners Hospital in Spokane. They even have an out, uh, outlet office in, in Kalispell. So they do a lot of incredible work, and it's only possible through donations and support. West team with the ball again, Duchesne. They're getting a little tricky. And Tom Carter can't haul it in. Good defensive play by the East. Sniffing that one out. Xander Dean, he's been all over the place for the East defense. And say the only bright spots for the East so far is that defensive secondary. They've had some monster plays. They really have. They've they kept the game in close for a long time. But when Wilson stepped on the field and pushed that West team down, that was that was it. Last check we had, West was over 300 yards total offense, 308. Taking a look at the current totals. 308 yards of offense for the West, 207 through the air, 101 on the ground. Meanwhile, the East, just 105 yards total offense, 57 passing, 48 rushing. Not much doing. Duchesne fumbles the snap under pressure. But he gets away, as he always seems to do, and finds his man, Tom Carter. But it's going to be intercepted by I the East, I believe. Did he come down with that? No, he said he was out of bounds. Oh. It's been some great secondary play, really. This East team is from the very beginning, is that's where its strength was, and it's held up. You know, we talked a lot about the state championship wrestlers. I uh -huh. mean, there there really isn't anything you're going to put in front of them that's going to bother them. <laughs> I mean, seriously, <laughs> there is it. Yeah. Yeah. To, to win one state championship, an incredible feat. You got to go a whole season, a whole tournament. To win four, like Avery Allen of Bozeman and that East secondary does. I think, just incredible. I, I think that's the 20th. If I'm, if I'm correct, I shouldn't even say it because I, I don't remember, but I did hear the stat. Maybe the 20th four-time state champ in the history of Montana. There's a little more, actually. I think it's up in the 40s at this point. Is it? Yeah. Um, you know, they, they got a rich history of wrestling in Montana. Obviously, the Zadok brothers in Great Falls. Uh, Gene Taylor wrestled in the Olympics. Or Gene Davis, rather. Sorry, not Gene Taylor. Well, if anybody, if you've never been in the Metro for the all-class state wrestling tournament and watch that unfold, especially that champion, championship knife. Yeah, truly a one-of-a-kind experience. It is unbelievable. Let, let's go down to the field to Ashley Washburn. I just wanted to add to that really quick. Avery Allen was actually the 40th. There were two champions at this wrestling tournament this past year that were met that 40 four time challenge and then you had Glacier's team Vasquez. He was 39. Avery Allen was 40. Hey, thanks so thanks much. For that update. Uh, Avery Allen going to be heading to South Dakota State University to wrestle. And that's another cool part about Montana. We put a lot of Division One wrestlers in, in some big time programs, South Dakota State being one of them. But we got folks at Iowa State, Iowa, Purdue, Parker Phileas just wrapped up his career out of Haver. A lot of fun to watch. And like you said, that all-class state wrestling tournament in Billings, one of a kind. Magic it, there. It is unbelievable. Marquee event for the state of Montana in high school athletics activities. Connor Mashad back to punt for the West team. 13 minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Let's see if the East can get any sort of spark going. And nothing doing on the return. Good coverage by the West Special Teams Unit. Great coverage. Caden Hansen. Caden Hansen out of Beaverhead County. Elijah Ratliff in on that as well out of Thompson Falls. Montana trivia question. Do you refer to Dylan as a Dylan Beavers, or do you refer to him as the Beaverhead County Beavers, or do you, and is it Fergus County Eagles, or is it Lewistown Eagles? That's a good question. It, it goes back and forth. So 
I've been drilled, you know, working in media, uh, using the AP style version. And for whatever reason, we say Dillon and Lewistown. Even though the high schools themselves are Beaverhead and Fergus. They're county high schools, right? They are county high schools. Yeah, you get folks from all over the place coming through there. But, you know, they're pretty interchangeable. But uh, I know there's a lot of pride no matter what you call them. A lot of success as well. We're going to take a quick commercial break with 13 minutes remaining in the ball game here at the 76 Montana East West Shrine game. The West team on top, 31 to 7 on the Town Pump scoreboard. We'll be right back. So Welcome back to Naranji Stadium. It is 31-7 West team at the 76th Annual Montana East-West Shrine Game. And to their credit, the fans sticking around. This game, not, not the most thrilling of, of contests. It is an all-star football game. There's been some mistakes, been some bright spots as well, but the fans sticking it out, as you know, Butte Wood. As you know, Butte Wood. I'll tell you, Butte, I don't know if we, we haven't talked about it yet tonight, but, you know, do you see the fire truck that, that that's hanging the American flag with their big ladder truck? How cool is that? Yeah. I mean, that is just really, really cool. Pretty awesome. Big, big American flag. You see that, the big ladder truck up, and it was fun watching them put that up. If I recall, a couple of years ago when this game was at Bob Greenfield of Montana Tech, they had the same fire truck and flag up there, too. It's a staple of these contests in Butte there. They love their football. They love their country. They love their town. They love their community. And they certainly love supporting the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane and they're all stars. Back to the action here. Again, a little bit of success for the East going outside away from away from the, where there's most people. That's Braden Klein, the reception, picking up the first down at a Big Sandy. Big Sandy winning their first ever football championship. Is that right? I didn't, re I didn't realize that. That's their first state I, championship, Big Sandy? I believe so. I, I could be wrong. Yeah, I believe that was their first ever football Big championship. Big Sandy Pioneers. They, they won a couple basketball championships in the day, but they went undefeated this season. What a year. And that's Braden Klein leading the way. And here we go. Here's a nice got a little juice going. That's Gage Norslein again. Just a star for Fergus coach Derek Lear. In the Eagles. Boy, they've had some success, haven't they? Yeah. Wow. Norsling scored five touchdowns in that state championship game against Billing Central. Give it back to Boyd. Picks up a couple good yards. He's got something going here in the fourth quarter. A little something going. A little, little rhythm, a little no huddle. We'll take it, you know, at this point, pull out all the stops. Just throw whatever you got at them. That's right. Let's see it. Get down the field. And don't hold back, folks. I mean, there's still plenty of football left. 11 minutes, 31 seconds. That means 11 minutes for you to call that phone number on your screen. one 3 shrine Kate Boyd squirts ahead. And, yeah, close to a first down, maybe just a little bit short. Or mtshrinegame.org. Anything helps. Donations. And just call and say hello. We got a lot of really great folks working the phones for this telethon and the Shriners fundraising efforts. Call and say hello. And you know, maybe you want to donate five and you like the folks on the other end so much, you donate ten dollars. Anything helps, folks. Norsley takes it himself, gets a nice block from K Boyd. He's got some space. Picks up a first down on third and short. Cross midfield. That sets up the East team with first and 10 for the 42-yard line. Big thank you to our telethon crew again, Keith and Michelle Davey from Kalispell, and Shelly Taylor of Kalispell, and Ruby Pick of Missoula, Jim and Marlene Gray of Big Fork. Thank you guys so much for doing that under Joey Sider's tutelage. Some of the friendliest folks you'll ever chat with. Please just give them a call. Say hello. And open your hearts, folks. Orsling back again, having some success with a deep shot down the field, and he cannot hang it up, but there's going to be a flag pass interference on the West defense. You know, both the, both teams, the secondary coverage has been very good. I mean, a lot of flags and stuff, but very, very good. East has got something going. Let's take a look at the penalty numbers right now. We got nine on the West team. That's number 10 and 11 for the East team. So, And I, I think of the 10 or of, of the 18 or 19 um, 
I only have 16 toes, so I can't count all the way to 20. <laughs> but, you know, there's been a majority in the secondary. Yeah, yeah, a lot of pass interference calls, 50-50 balls, a lot of contact before the ball arrives, and you're going to get a flag on those nearly every time. Everybody's playing man coverage now. Man coverage means that my back is usually, if I'm the defender, my back's to the quarterback, so I can't see. I play, I'm playing the, the receiver's eyes and uh, get a little impatient. Those hands go up a little bit too soon. So nonetheless, it's first down for the East team. They're in business in deep and West territory. Orsley rolls out under pressure. Talon Marsh jump pass. He finds a man and he gets almost to the first down marker. That is Evan Chair. No, that is a uh, see. I didn't quite catch the number. Number 11, Cole Taylor. Cole Taylor. There he is. Quarterback to quarterback connection. That was a jump pass. Yeah, he saw the, the contact coming, was about to get laid out, leaped in the air, and just pushed it forward to Cole Taylor, who had the awareness to take it out. Look at that replay, Norsley and Taylor. Taylor we're brought to, out. We're up to 26000 26000 We just had a $1,000 and a $500 donation. So thank you guys very much for that. Appreciate the call. Appreciate guys. that very much. Moving that pile. There you go. Look at that. Stopped about the, uh, the first down yardage marker, and then he's... Uh, push forward to about the 12 yard line. I like that rule that change. Was fun. I do. I, I like the push the pile. See a, a lot of that in the NFL these days. Do. That's beef on yeah. beef. <laughs> beef on beef. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Big well, you figure the average NFL offensive lineman's what, 315, 320? So there's four or five threes there, and there's a couple 280s on the other side. That's a lot of beef. <laughs> Not much you can do. You know, they had uh, the banquet last night. At the Max Center, everyone had prime rib. So these oh balls on the floor. West oh, it looks like they fell no. on it. West is showing That's the tears. That's going to be a turnover. West is going to take the ball. Oh, no. Nine minutes, 24 seconds. If we take a replay on that, but that ball clearly came out and it was a clear recovery. Mm -hmm. the official is official says yes. Dominic Ubele yes. again from oh. Missoula Sentinel. He's had a heck of a ball game as well. He really has. Been all over the place. There it was. He'll, he'll be playing his college football here in Butte for Montana Tech. Got a good pick up there. Yeah, so that's the East first turnover, actually. You know, we had those two on the, for the West in the, in the first half, but first time the East has turned over the ball, and it came at a really bad time when they were deep, deep in West Territory. Wilson back under center. Some contact there. Deep ball, but no one home on the other end. Falls incomplete. Sander Dean coverage for the East. Xander Dean again. 31 7 in a fade ball. You know how that makes that makes friends on the other side of the sideline. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, earlier in the game, we, we saw Chris Garcia go down. He was uh, taken off on a stretcher cart to the hospital with looked like a lower leg injury. And uh, Ashley Washburn's on the sideline. She has an update on, on his status. Yeah, I just turned to my right, and I actually just saw him walk through the gate. So he is here back from the hospital. I went to go talk to the tech coaches because I saw he stopped there and talked to him a bit about the injury. No official word on what exactly happened. He did do some extras, MRI, to see what's happening. But he is on the sideline. He's sitting with some crutches and his boots uh, with a boot. Um, but I just saw some people go over and give him a hug and dab him up. So he's definitely in good spirits, but uh, definitely a pretty significant injury to his right leg. I love it. Thanks so much, Ashley. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate you got injured, but of course, you know, you want to finish the game with your team. Uh, you know, this is a once in a lifetime experience. Might as well come back and enjoy it with your teammates, win or lose. It's, it's just a wonderful event. You know, you know I'm, I'm glad he had the wherewithal to come back and talk to his coaches, let everyone know he's, he's okay. I was talking to Jeff Hartwick earlier this week, and he is the West team coordinator. And he made a, just a great statement. And, you know, the camaraderie that these guys have, it's, it's a pretty unique fraternity, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeff said, you know, the one thing about playing in the Shrine game is you, you, the one thing you never forget is you never forget who you played with. And there, there's, there's truth to that. Without a doubt. I mean, we, we were talking about Matt Triplett earlier. And, you know, he's the uh, head coach of the Belt football team and assistant on this East team. He met. Uh, the guy who he was an assistant under before he took over the job, Jeff Graham, during the Shrine game. 
back in the day when they played together. And then, you know, all these years later, they, they coached together. And now, you know. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's, that's a neat story. That's originally when they met, you know. Uh, yeah, there's, there's all kinds of stories. I mean, a lot of these guys, maybe they didn't know each other so much before this week, but they're going to be friends for life just because of what they went through. For Yeah, they really week. will. So certainly a unique aspect to, to any All-Star game, but the Shrine game eventually, especially just because it means so much more. There's Wilson with a deep ball, and he's got him ah, just outside. Just a step, step ahead of Cameron Guernsey again, who's had a monster day. Been quiet in the second half, but he had a, about four or five catches in the first half. These critical catches, too. Critical catches that really set the tone for this ball game. Guernsey with 769 receiving yards in his senior season, seven touchdowns. Of course, he's playing for the University of Montana. We talked about that. You actually that have a paper left that has a has statistics on it. Yeah. Because <laughs> the first three seconds of the first quarter, when the wind came in, blew mine completely. It it is probably you know I don't know maybe over in Townsend somewhere right now. <laughs> yeah, it was it was dicey in that first quarter. It just came up out of nowhere. But that's Montana weather for you. Maybe some fun looking uh, action on the field too. All right, we're getting another punt. The West team, Ashad, future Montana Tech basketball player. Oh, he caught player. that one. That's a deep, deep punt. Huge block in the back. They are going to throw a flag, though. Yep, sure enough. A couple flags coming in. I think I think the one flag on there is a is a is a illegal blindside block. Mm -hmm. That one is pretty clear. You, you heard the reaction from the crowd here. Not what you want to see with seven minutes and 11 seconds remaining in the 76 Montana East West Shrine game 31 to 7 West with a big big lead. We'll have another meeting of the officials on the field as they sort out the penalties and the what was your favorite sport. Did you play up? sports in high school. I did well, not well not well. Well it doesn't matter well yeah. or what 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 was your sport uh, basketball. I, I was a basketball guy. Still am. Love me some football, though. Did play my junior and in, in, uh, ju sophomore and junior year of football at Bozeman High School. Wasn't talented enough to make a Shrine game or make much of a roster. Played some JV. That's about it. I was really good at pass interference. That was my specialty. No one caught the ball on me, but. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I had a blast. Playing for the Hawks. Thirty one seven West with the lead seven minutes 11 seconds remaining. Still sorting everything out looks like East is going to take over on the 15 yard line. First and 10. We're going to take a quick commercial break here in the fourth quarter. West team leading 31 to 7. We'll be right back from Naranchi Stadium for the Montana East West Shrine game. I'm and welcome back to Ranchi Stadium. Seven minutes remaining in this ball game. 31 to 7 West with the lead after the penalty situation. East takes over first and 10 from the 15 yard line. And they had a good drive going for them last time before the untimely turnover. Let's see if they can make something happen as time winds down in this ball game. The pitch. Rafe Longin. Rafe Longin. Kyle Holter, Central, making the tackle. Rafe Longin, he's headed to the University of Montana for academics, though, not playing football, but his brother, Gabe Longin, plays for the Grizzlies. Just an athletic, talented family at a Great Falls, Bison legacy. Taylor in a quarter or Casa Grande or actually in a quarterback and he finds a man that's going to be Matthew Golick heading to Carroll College next year 6'4 195 pound receiver out of Lewistown that state championship undefeated squad coached by coach Derek Weir. Carroll got a few of those guys. They do there's three uh, I believe. And Robinson, he decommitted. We talked about him earlier, but he's he Carroll bound too. But he basketball, made right? Four. Correct. Yep. He was going to play for Carroll, but uh, Lewistown sending Jet Boyce, Gage Norslein, and Matthew Golick going to play for Tony Purcell and the Saints. We're in the purple and gold playing at 
the hilltop. You've had some experience at Carroll, if I'm not mistaken, right? I did. Yeah, covered him through right, all those the, the national championships. What an experience. <laughs> oh, boy. What a run. Yeah, that was unbelievable. Four consecutive national championships. Or was it six? It was four? Four. Four in, four in a row, yeah. six total. Six total it was. Just an uh, unbelievable run by Coach Mike Van Deest and the Carroll Saints back in the early aughts. And uh, that program's certainly coming around again, it seems like. They were big sky, uh, Frontier Conference champions last year after a, a fair amount of down years. And boy, they're hitting the recruiting trail hard and got those Lewistown guys. And we're at a timeout. We're going to take a quick commercial break. 6.30 left in the ball game. 31-7 West team. We'll be right back with more East-West Shrine game action. And we're back in Naranji Stadium for the 76 Montana East West Shrine game. East with the ball, third and four from the 20 yard line. Third and five. Down 31 to seven, though. Working with something. Jake Casagrande, he's had a little success rolling to his right. Fires down the field and misses his man. Not much doing in the passing game for the East team all night. Checking with my friend Joey Sider to see where we are at this time. We have about 621 left in the game. We were at 26,170 plus that 20,000 match by the foundation, Washington Foundation, which we're very appreciative of. We also got the, the update that those 10 year old girls, you'll yeah. call it up, donating yeah. $11, whatever was in their piggy bank. We love it. Absolutely love it. So please, there's still time left, six minutes, 21 seconds, and it certainly doesn't end after the ball game. And you can always call that number. Well, you can always go to the website, mtshrinegame.org, donate. I mean, they'll take donations all year round, and it always helps. Incredible stuff as the East punts it away. Cole Taylor finds Willem Arsenault. And he's got some running room. Oh, Canada. Forced out about the 43-yard line. Or 37-yard line, rather, the other way. mtshrinegame.org, 18337 shrine Please. We would certainly love to see Ashley do the gritty before this night is over. And I hope you at home gonna, would, too. I'm going to YouTube the gritty when I get home. <laughs> Dante keeps laughing over here. Do you do the gritty, Dante? Got Dante doing doing stats up here. Yeah, yeah. He, he says he knows the gritty. I might have seen the gritty once or twice. Could I do it? No, no chance. But I know Ashley could, and she'd do it well. The completion to Crispin over the middle, but called dead. Another flag. A lot of penalties tonight. Over 20 combined for both teams. And again, that's just what you get when, <laughs> when you try to cobble together an offense and a defense and. Six days. We're Seven up to days. We're up to 28,000. 28, hey, all right. Thanks, Joey, for the 000. updates. All right. And that's not even including that 20,000 from the Dennis and Phyllis Washington Foundation. So we'll say 48,000 plus the, thir the 33 30, last night. 32. So we're doing all right. You know, and a lot of donations, they don't come in during the telecast. They're, they're mailed in over the, the, the course of the week. They're included through separate events. So, you know, all told, I think we're going to be pushing that record last year of two hundred twenty thousand dollars that'd be great that would be great boy i'd be happy to hear that deep pass from wilson Wilson's out of the arms of Willem, Willem arsenault the canadian they're trying to get him a touchdown yeah he's been targeted a lot he in has this game but uh, just hasn't been able to haul it in that's uh, credit to the defense in the secondary of the east team Just under six minutes to go in the 76th Montana East-West Shrine game. 76 years. Can you believe that? 76 years, 75 games, right? 75 games. 2020, uh -huh. Uncle COVID. Yeah, or no, this is the 76. So 76 S games, 77 years. 77, 76. Yep. Uh -huh. 2020 missed, and of course, a lot of really talented uh, athletes didn't get a chance to play in their Shrine game, but they made the most of it anyway. You know, Tommy Mallott, now it was Jared Wilson. Scooting for a big game <laughs> on second long. I think he got, the first, yeah, think he got the first down. Yeah, yeah back to, to 2020, we we're talking about it. Those athletes didn't get a chance to play, but you know they wanted to fundraise anyway. So a lot of Butte Central and Butte High School athletes they organized a cornhole tournament 
led by Tommy Mallott, current Montana State quarterback. Touchdown, Tommy. Probably the most famous <laughs> football player in the state at the moment. And they raised a good amount of money for the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane. Even though there wasn't a game, they made the most of it. And that's what Montana does. Yep. Joey says the phones are slow. Guys, we got to make Joey happy. Please call that number, 1833. That's going to be a wow, big hit on Casa. On uh, Duchesne, rather. Duchesne's pass Ball falls incomplete. No flag, though. It was close. Freshman applying to buy number 8,500 Charbonneau. I couldn't you. see what the flag was. Was it defensive pass interference or? I, I was looking at the quarterback. I saw I was, him get knocked out. I didn't see where the ball landed. The Tanner Macy out of Billings Senior was slamming his fist down. So I don't know if he. Huh. Oh, no, it's offensive. That's what he. Okay. That's what I thought he was. So the West will get pushed back. Oh, sure. There you go. Yeah. Took an interception from him. That's 12 penalties for the West team. 12 on the ball game. And that's been the, you know, outside of the penalties, the West has dominated this game, but uh, it, it could be a lot uglier. Duchesne and Carter in the backfield. Trying to close this game out with just un over five minutes left to play. Carter not going anywhere. Brought down by. I think it's getting a little chippy out there. It's getting a little chippy. There's, uh, <laughs> I believe the East team is in double digit penalties at the moment as well. They got 13 penalties now. I think that's what they call that. A little, little chippy. 25 combined penalties in this 76 Montana East West Shrine. That might be a record as well. We'd have to check the record books on that. That might be. I, I can't imagine there's uh, been other all star contests with, with this much chippiness. And that's a that's a face when you when you rip the helmet off that player with the face mask. I think that is a face mask penalty. <laughs> I'd say I don't know. I'd have to look check the, the books, but I do believe that that qualifies as a face mask penalty. And the West team will get that first down back. I think these 27 yard offensive line time. coordinators would do well to run the ball and get the game done. Yeah, at this point we're, we're big time shot over the middle and it's going to be a touchdown. How about it? Eli Norris out of Dillon, Montana. Adding to the West lead, hauls it into the back of the end zone off a dot from Patrick Duchesne. And the West team goes on top 37 to 7. Tough to cover. Watch this receiver back off. He goes, he fades to his left. Incredible pass by Duchesne. That's, uh, I believe, his first touchdown throw of the Tough to cover. Evening, I could be wrong. His second touchdown of the night. The first for Eli Norse on the receiving end of that. <laughs> Eli Norse heading to Montana Western where his dad, Ryan Norse, coaches the Bulldogs. Now Norse, Norse missed, uh, you know, nearly all of his. You picture MVP yet? That's a good question. Um, I, I would have to say Jared Wilson at this stage, just because he changed the tenor of the game. Yeah, you know, he, he that's came right in and, and really set the tone and set the pace. Yeah. Um, Record-setting quarterback, just uh, having a, a heck of a game. We'll, we'll hope to get official word from the folks in charge of selecting the MVPs before we go off the air tonight. But I know we're past the 10 o'clock hour, so our newscasters at the MTN stations across the state KTVQ, KRTV, KPAX, KBZK, KXLF, KXLH. They're all waiting to get the 10 o'clock news going. We'll have highlights of this game, of course, courtesy of our uh, Sam Hoyle on the sidelines and shooting highlights, cutting the package. He'll send that to our station. So if, you, if somehow you missed the action tonight during the broadcast, you can catch those highlights during your 10 o'clock news at the conclusion of this game. 29,370, Tom. 29,370. Boy, can we get to 30,000 before this night's done? Keep chopping wood. Let's, Let's do just it, keep folks. chopping it. 
Can we get to 30,000? There's four minutes, 37 seconds remaining in this ball game. We are so close to $30,000. Or what is it? Yeah, $30,000. 29,370 at this stage. Thanks, Joey Sider, for the updates all night long. Bottom of your screen, that's the action. Please do it. 18337 Shrine, mtshrinegame.org. Lots of ways to donate to the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane. Thirty-eight seven West with a big lead. Let's say this one's gonna go in as a West victory. <laughs> Third West miraculous. victory in a row. That's right. Yeah, it's a streak. You know, the East dominated the all-time series, but you string together three, three in, in a row, row, and that's a streak. Like Norris lean back under center for the East team, rolling to his right up the play action. Uh, it's just out of the hands of Luke Smith, the future Montana State Bobcat tight end out of Bozeman. Luke Smith with 44 receptions, 845 yards, and 12 touchdowns as a senior. You know, Bozeman started the season 0-2, then reeled off nine straight victories to make it to that state championship game before they ran into the juggernaut known as Kel Helena Capital, Coach Hyam Kellish. Obviously, he's in Bozeman. He's going to be playing for Montana State. That's every Bozeman kid's dream. Smith was the Eastern AA East defensive MVP in 2022. So another one of those guys who just plays well on both sides of the ball, but he'll be playing tight end for the Bobcats. Have you, coach. have you been to a Bobcat game? I have, yeah, yeah I, went to, I got a chance to, to, to be on the, the, uh, in the booth for a lot of the games this year. And, you know, I grew up in Bozeman, so I went to my share. Well, I'll tell you what, that pregame, <laughs> the pageantry with that rodeo team taking that team out is a pretty cool deal. Yeah. That is really something. It was college game day. Was there for the Cat Grizz game this year, and they they uh, flew a drone around the field as that was going on. That was pretty incredible. And uh, you know, we mentioned Paige Rasmussen winning a CNFR championship earlier in the night. She's the one who leads those those uh, horses onto the field. Those carries the flag. Those horses must trust their rider, and the riders must there's trust their horses because there's what twenty some thousand people on their feet screaming mm -hmm. as loud as they can. There's fire behind them. There's the um, like fireworks above them. I mean, and those horses just hold it together. <laughs> I actually had a chance to, to chat with Flint about this at one point during on the sidelines of a Bobcat game. He says sometimes it's not the crowd that that, that uh, gets in their head or even the fireworks. It's the lines on the football field. Oh, really? Yeah, they, they get to the where the white meets the green, mm -hmm. you know, like on that. the sideline. And they're like, oh, I'm not sure if that's a cliff or what. So they won't go past it. But they, a lot of training goes into to making sure that thing happens and, and goes off without a hitch. And it's just uh, one of the most electric opens in all of college it football. It really is. It's, it's really something. And being from Montana and, and knowing that's kind of who we are, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's really neat. Yeah, pretty I wouldn't want to be standing on the other sideline getting ready to play him. I know that. <laughs> oh, another one. Well, I do see if. Okay. All right. It's getting chippy down there. Yeah, again. it really okay, is. Lots. Helmets are off. Well, no one wants to see anybody get hurt. Yeah. There's no way with that. Oh, boy. Well, it's going to take a little bit to sort out as well. Uh, do we see any flags on the field at the moment? I, I don't know. Are they just late letting them play? Too. I think at this point, just yeah. try to get the game over. Yeah, we don't need anybody to get hurt. No. Folks on the sidelines are, are heated. They're fired up. There's been a couple of those late hits on the sideline, too, right? Yeah. This one's pretty late. Yeah, I think that one's quite clear. He's out of bounds, and the hit comes in late. Hunter Charbonneau has had just a great game on defense, but you don't like to see that. But again, sometimes you just don't know where you are on the field. You're playing to the whistle. It's way off the field there. And that's two future Bobcats. These guys are going to be teammates in the fall. Yeah. Charbonneau and Jones. All right, so make it 26 penalties on the night. 
Three minutes, 21 seconds remaining. I, I believe that, that most of the folks just want this one to mercifully be over. But that three minutes, 21 seconds mean we still have some time to donate to the Shriners Children's Hospital in Spokane, Washington. 1-8337-SHRINE-MTSHRINE-GAME.ORG. We've got to hit that $30,000 mark. Yes. We're awfully close, folks. Awfully close. I, I'm going to go ahead and say that, OK, as we get another penalty here, 27. False start on the offense for the West. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say this. Ashley, if you can hear me down there, if we get to 30,000, will you do a gritty? How about 35? Ashley. Can you guys hear me? There we, we go. We can hear you, Ashley. Yeah, How about 35? 35. 35. Okay, <laughs> that's the challenge at this point. Three minutes, 21 seconds left. 35, and we get to see a gritty. <laughs> we get to see a gritty, all right? I better start practicing. Start I'm stretching up. on get this east sideline. I don't know if you guys can see me. We're doing a little stretch over here. Yeah. Where's camera four? Find Ashley. Yeah, where's camera four? Let, let's see where. <laughs> doing a little, should I do a little kicks? Yeah, little kicks, do butt a little kickers, arm stretch. High, high knees. Uh, all of that stuff, yeah. 35,000. Yeah, 35, Signed, sealed, we'll delivered. All right. And all gritty for you. Only Joey, if Dante does updated. it with me. All right, Dante's going to do it up here in the booth. Dante, okay, perfect. You've been, you've been drafted by Ashley. Right. You can't see Dante, but we'll, we'll describe it to you as it happens. He's going to be doing the gritty alongside Ashley in different locations. Should we get to $35,000? I can promise he probably gritties like 10,000 times better than me. I don't think I've ever really done it. I just was looking for a way to raise money tonight, so it, it might be in a very embarrassing night. But hey, for thirty-five thousand dollars, I'll do it. All right. Will Carter do it alongside you? That's the other question. Can we both do the gritty? Why not? So we get another touchdown for the West. How about Jay Stenson from Butte, the hometown kid, finding the end zone, adding to that West lead. Six more points, 44-7 to seven with 2 minutes, 21 seconds left in the game. A Butte kid scoring in Butte, Montana. Slow keep around the outside. There you go. Jay Stenson, you know, we, we talked about his throwing numbers at quarterback, also rushed for 714 yards and seven touchdowns this year. First team All-State quarterback, academic All-State, all four Go years of high school. These guys are All-Stars on the field and in the classroom. He'll be pursuing a degree in applied health science. As the extra point is up and good, 45 to seven. 404 yards of total offense for the West team. They just eclipsed the 400-yard mark. 232 through the air, 172 on the ground. That's our guy Dante making sure we're updated with all the latest statistics. All right, we're going to go down to Ashley where she is warming up. She might not be talking, but we're going to take a look at, at this warm-up for the gritty, this dance move. What's up? There we go. Let's see. All right, we'll Ashley. We're, we're waiting. We're going to see the uh, the warm-ups you're doing. You're on camera, Ashley. Let's see it. Yeah. Oh, double warm-ups. I was just doing like a little leg stretch <laughs> over here. Maybe some some arm stretches. I just I'm really confident about us getting to thirty-five thousand dollars. I think so. so. Do I it. So. And you might get a little gritty. All right. <laughs> I, I challenge Carter to do it alongside you too. That'd be fun. I That'd love it. That'd be fun for all of us. The flows. The great flows tonight. Great hair from everyone involved in the MTN broadcast. Well, Greg, <laughs> what can you say? What do you say? Yeah. I say we're in beautiful Butte. We are. Did a great game today. I mean, the score wasn't great, but it was mm -hmm. a, the event was super. Yeah, there's, there's no doubting the talents on, on both sides of the divide, west and east. Oh, look at that. There's a little trickery. Cade Boyd with the ball. He's cutting loose. He's going to break this one, I believe. One man to beat, and he beats speed. him. How about it? <laughs> the East team. A little trickeration. He held the ball behind his back. Yeah, I can't wait to see back. this replay. And that's going to be a touchdown. I'm not sure where he called it. It's going to be over 80 yards, but the East team is oh, on the board man. again for the first time since the second quarter. <laughs> How about he Cade Boyd? He held that ball on his hip. That's great. <laughs> Completely fooled the West team coverage, kickoff coverage team. They had no idea where this ball is. Look at this. Well, they didn't show up there, but. No, you got to get him yeah. from the start. Once he decided to get 
it going. He got going down the sideline, turns on the Jets, beat the one man he had to beat, and he's into the painted turf into Ranchi Stadium for an East touchdown with just over two minutes remaining in the game. 45-13 pending the extra point. That's the old take the ball and hide it behind your left <laughs> hip trick. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I did too. Yeah, this is one of those ones you, you do it like the last couple minutes of practice. Right? Let's see. Maybe in this situation <laughs> we can do this. And sure enough, it pays off. Cole Taylor takes the snap, but he's going to be stopped short of the two point conversion. So that's where the score remains 45 13. East with a little bit of fun at the end of this ball game. Absolutely. What's going to blow out so far? All right, $35,000, the number to reach if we're going to see Ashley Washburn and Carter Culver do the gritty on the sideline here at Moranchi Stadium. I think all Montana's waiting now. Yeah. It's it's still a gritty, a gritty moment. Waiting for the 10 o'clock news to begin in your local Montana television network station. But we are just a couple thousand dollars right, away from watching the gritty. All right, here That's we go. Just going slow. Behind, yep, they have over. no idea. Mom the can't see me. <laughs> no one can see me. No one can see me. Oh, that's great. All right. We're going to go down to the field to Carter Culver. Carter, what's up? Hey, I'm down here right now on the west sideline, and they are all getting riled up right now, running up to their coaches. Patrick Duchesne leading the charge, saying, we want to break the record. The record for most points scored by a single team in a Shrine game is 48 points. Now, as you can see, West got 45 with 203 to play, so they are itching to break that record. <laughs> Etch their names in the history books. We'll see if it happens. They've been pummeling the, the East defense all night, so <laughs> may just happen. We'll have to see how it goes. Back up to you guys in the booth. Hey, thanks, ah. Carter. I, I don't know if you saw behind you, but those West players were fired up. You saw Patrick Duchesne. He heard what you were talking about the record. He's like, yes, let's do it. Yes, let's do it. <laughs> I love it. So, I love it. I mean, it. there's something to, have to play for. That. I mean, why wouldn't there you is, want to get the all-time scoring record? This no doubt race? about it. You know, why? Why quit early? So we'll have to see how it ends up shaking out and if they ask their names even further into the history books. Well, they're going to get the ball back here. Three points away. Why not go for it at this stage? 45. Oh, he drops the football, but he falls on top of That's Eli Taylor heads up play to maintain possession of the football. And well, if they want to get the record, they got under two minutes left to do it. How about a two minute drill to blow out ball game? Well, let's see. Let's just see how this unfolds. There's Taylor losing the football, tracks it down, gets on top of it. All right. So okay. the West team has less than two minutes to try to break the all time scoring record. You folks at home have less than two minutes to try to hit $35,000 to see Ashley and Carter Culver do the gritty on the sideline. Dante Williams up here in the booth will do it as well. You won't see that, but we will tell you it's going to be grand. Just magnificent. Tom Moving the, the football, Tom Carter. Clock's going to continue to run. Picks up about five yards. Now yeah, we're at 31,175. Did you hear that, folks? 31,175, yeah. just a couple thousand dollars away. 134, 132 in the game. Clock, clock, talks, talks clicking. <laughs> Clock's, Clock's ticking. ticking. I, I can't <laughs> call time out from up here either. <laughs> All right. Let's see if they air this out and go for the record. I, I would love to see it. At this stage, why not? The players want it. They absolutely want it. Yeah, they're not going to because he's no. playing the clock down. Yeah, that, that's the right thing to do, I'd say. All right, I'd say one you're minute right. left, folks. Yeah, they're just going to hand it off, run this ball game out, and it's going to go in the record books as the third straight win for the West team in the Montana East-West Shrine Game series. Well, there's some, there was some impressive play. There sure was. There, there really was. I mean, anytime you got cal athletes of that caliber, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm impressed with Jones. I'm impressed with with uh, the defensive line for for West, all of them. Um, Yep, just just a great, great area. But I still got to go with Wilson as my MVP. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of bright futures, no doubt about that. I mean, all these the majority of these guys are going to be playing college football. So, this is the closing a chapter in their high school careers, but it's certainly not going to be the end of their football careers. We got Stenson at a quarterback now, giving the hometown fans what they want, and that will do it.
Clock's going to run out. They're not going to get the record. They were awfully close, though. How about it? The West team in front of a pro West crowd here in Butte, America. Walking away with a 45-13 win in the 76th Montana East-West Shrine game. That is your ball game. We will be right back with interviews from the winning team. We'll go to break. We'll see you on the other side. And welcome back. That's your final score on the screen. The West team coming away with a convincing 45-13 victory in the Montana East-West Shrine game, 76th edition. We do have some stats from the final whistle here. The West offense, 415 yards total offense. East offense, 174. We had called Jared Wilson our MVP at 134 yards through the air, one touchdown. Duchesne also in the running, 98 yards through the air, two touchdowns. Uh, Greg, what, what what are your thoughts uh, after this 76 Shrine game? Well, I, you know, it it, it kind of played out like we thought it would from the storyline. We we felt the strength of the East team was in the in the secondary. I also thought that you know the familiarity with with uh, with uh, the the Fergus High guys would, would would be a change, but it wasn't, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of it because of the quality of the defense and the defensive front, and and then you know Wilson just came out and just put on a show. I mean, he really did, and. Uh, showed some great athleticism in Jones, and uh, it just was just too much firepower for the East. Yeah, without a doubt, Jones with the 88 yards rushing plus that touchdown. Jay Stenson getting in the end action as well with 15 yards and, and one touchdown. We're going to take a look at some of the highlights from, from this ball game. As Carter Culver's getting ready to find one of the West players. You can see their faces on there. They're absolutely just thrilled to be walking off with a win there. That's uh, in the early goings, Jones with a touchdown. There's that big catch. Bryce Umphrey from Mission calling it in. Other end, Eli Taylor. Everyone getting on the scoring action. Duchesne to Norse. Future Montana Western Bulldog. We playing for his dad. Taking a look at the uh, celebration there. And that's Gavin, the Shrine Patient Ambassador, hanging out with the West team. No one's more excited than he is. That is really cool. What a great role models for him. That's just awesome. And it's, you know, for them to see that, too, that, you know, there's there's little guys out there that are really struggling. And that's why these guys come in and play and um, hats off to everyone. It's just a it's just a great event. And, uh, you know, last check we had from, from Joey, we were about at 30, 31,000, 32,000. And all right, we're going to go down to the field with Carter Culver, who's standing by with one of the winning players from the West team. Hey, I'm down here on the field with winning quarterback Patrick Duchesne. Monstrous performance orchestrating this offense tonight. 45-13 win. Walk me through your emotions, man. Yeah, uh, honestly, I'm a, the first half was a little rusty for us. I mean, it was hard to get in the groove when me and Jarrett were uh, splitting series. But uh, in the second half, we seen, both of us seemed to find our groove. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, we just were able to read the defense very well, make the right reads, and make the good throws. I mean, Jarrett balled out. I mean, it was, it was just fun to play with him and play with this offense. I love hearing it, man. Can you just walk me through what this means, you know, capping off your high school career like this before heading to the Cats? Yeah, I mean, it's it's an awesome experience, especially here at Naranchi. Uh, when we're playing in this, front of this big crowd in the stadium, and to come out with a win in my last high school game, I mean, it's something special. Uh, it's so surreal. Um, and playing with all these athletes was just awesome. I love hearing it, man. And who you got here with you? This is uh, pretty much my little brothers, my second family, <laughs> Gage Goodnight and Graydon Goodnight. They're pretty special to me. Uh, I just love these guys, yeah. That's awesome, dude. And uh, what are you doing? What are the plans to celebrate with the team, family, friends? What's next? I mean, we'll see. I'm definitely going to hang out with some family, definitely going to hang out with some friends. Um, we're just going to have a good time, yeah. Awesome, man. That should just about do it for us. And congratulations again. That should do it from down here on the field. Back up to you guys. Hey, thanks, Carter. Two guys with great hair. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back to wrap things up from the Ranchi Stadium. Final score of the Montana East West Shrine game 45 13. West team coming out with a victory. And welcome back to Naranchi Stadium. Final score 45-13. West team with the win. 
Last we heard from Joey, Greg was around about 30 plus thousand. Yeah, a little over 31,000. A little over 31,000. And that means with the addition of the $20,000 from the Dennis and Phyllis Washington Foundation, that puts our total over about $50,000, which hits our goal, which means it's time to gritty. I don't know if we can go down to the sideline. If we got camera four standing by for Carter and Ashley, explain what's about to happen. Hey, we all just need a little bit of motivation sometimes. I will say, though, right before we did this, I just wanted to make sure I knew exactly what I was doing. Doing. Searched on Google, Google really quick how to gritty. <laughs> Don't really know if it taught me anything, but hey, a bet to bet. Um, you first? Oh, man, I, I'd like to dedicate this one to Dante Williams. He showed me how to do this <laughs> earlier, and, uh, but I would like to say I did not consent to this. This was roped into me by Ashley, so, but here we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, my. And this Lord, is my Google me. search okay. from 30 seconds ago. <laughs> Anyways, right. um, I'm really glad you... <laughs> You guys got to 35,000. <laughs> phones aren't closed yet. Yeah, I'm just going to pretend like that didn't happen. Sorry. <laughs> for a good cause. I, I don't know Anyways, <laughs> keep calling those phones. Keep donating. Um, I don't think I'll ever gritty on television ever again. So I don't know if I'd call it gritty. I might call it drizzle. Drizzle. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a drizzle. drizzle. The gristle, yeah. I, I don't know if I've seen Greg up and laugh so hard. <laughs> I'm glad I can In put a smile on your face, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, appreciate you guys. All right. Well, Greg, final thoughts from this game. Uh, just a great opportunity to do the game, and thanks to the athletes and the coaches and scripts for covering it. And I also appreciate doing games with you, Tom. There, oh. it's really fun, and you you just do a great job, and you got a great so voice. Good. And so, thank you for letting me be a part of it. Greg, absolute pleasure, man. <laughs> fun to work with you guys. Thanks to Carter and Ashley down on the sideline. Thanks to the Shriners. Thanks to the folks who, who made this game possible. Thanks to our behind-the-scenes crew, James Rafferty, Greg Heinzman, Matt Edwards, uh, Drew Shiner, uh, all the folks we, we can't name. We don't have time for it, but uh, just been a fantastic night I was at Naranchi Stadium. That'll do it for us here for the 76th Annual Montana East-West Shrine Game. Stay tuned for your 10 o'clock news. We'll have highlights of the game coming up in the sports segment. But for now, we're signing off. That's all for us. Please keep calling those phones. It's all for a great cause.